Sulab, you are on mute, actually. Sir, please unmute yourself. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Audible enough for everyone. Okay. Think so. Okay, great. So uh, yesterday we had an introduction session, right? Since it was a first day session, so we had an introduction session. We understand about uh, your experience, your uh, you know, about you, about your educational background. So today onwards, uh, around uh, uh, 12 to 15 hour session will be on basic networking security concept, right? Understanding, by understanding, we have people from various background here. So let's start from basics. I recommended you to watch the previous batch sessions, right? I hope many of the people has already watched it. If not, watch it by this weekend so that we can make this session a little faster. Okay, I'll ask the question from you. Once we go ahead with the session today onwards, I'll ask the question from you, right? Because uh, it's already available for seven days session on the YouTube and I'm recommending you to watch, right? So we'll do your knowledge check today onwards. So if you have not watched yesterday, you did not get the time. Then next session onwards, uh, you should be prepared for that, right? So that parallelly you will be prepared uh, along with the class only. So we will follow this kind of uh, you know uh, process further also. Whatever we covered, whatever homework I am giving to you, you have to complete within the week. I'll ask the question on the next sessions, right? So that along with the training, we'll be prepared for the interviews also. Because we understand many of the people, majority of the people are preparing for the interview. Means they want to start their career in cybersecurity. Considering that, we'll keep asking the question based on the homework given to you. Okay, so let's start. So, you have a computer, right? You have a computer. Same thing that you watched already. You have a computer. And you have got a computer. You have to access a website, facebook.com. Okay. Facebook.com is hosted in USA, isn't it? So uh, Facebook.com is hosted somewhere here in the internet. Uh, that means USA. So you have to access the Facebook.com. So what are the first thing you will do? You have got one computer only, right? You have got one laptop or desktop, whatever it is, right? And now you have to access the uh, Facebook.com. So what is the first thing you will do first? Need an internet connection from an ISP. So some people said open the browser without taking the internet. First of all, here Facebook is hosted on the internet, right? In USA, you should have connectivity, right? You should have a network. Then only you can reach out, isn't it? So if I want to access website Facebook.com, first of all, I have to take the internet connection. So internet connection. You will take from whom? ISP. ISP, right? Yes, sir. Internet service provider, right? In India, there are internet service providers such as Geo Fiber, Airtel Extreme, Tata Communication, you have SSV, um, ACT Fiber Net, right? So these companies we call ISP. In USA, you have Telenor, uh, different different right so these are internet mm -hmm. service provider from whom you took the internet right we call them isp internet service provider so you take for example you have taken the internet connection from airtel 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 right so as i, as I mentioned you have to take the first internet connection so what is internet internet right internet inter inter, inter you have intercity bus right Intercity buses means buses which goes which goes from runs from one city to another city because intercity, interstate, international flights, isn't it? Means one national to another national, one country to another country because it's international. Yes or no? Similarly, internet that means one network to another network, right? That we call as internet. So why internet here? Because Airtel has for example you have taken the connection from airtel right so airtel has not given the connection only to you 
there are lakhs of people who has taken the internet connection from airtel isn't it so airtel for example along with you there are several other people who has taken the internet connection from airtel yes or no so network so first of all let's understand network network means a way using which multiple computers are connected to each other isn't it multiple computers are when multiple computers are connected to each other and they can communicate with each other we call as network get a mind so airtel has given multiple uh, lakhs of people internet connection lakhs of computers so those computers are connected to airtel and they can connect to each other through airtel right so this we call as airtel network understand because understand airtel has given the internet to multiple different people right companies people individual people right so they are connected all with airtel right and and they form the these computers form the network because they all are connected to each other using the airtel their gateway right so this we call as network get it this thing we call as network right so now airtel computers are connected with each other similarly you have uh, geo fiber net isp geo fiber net also given the connection to lack of user geo fiber net users also connected with each other that we call as network similarly this facebook has taken the connection from telenor isp and telenor has given the connection to multiple people they also form the network yes or no but here you can see that you have taken the network from airtel but your facebook is not connected with airtel not taken the internet connection from airtel isn't it they have taken the internet connection from some other isp yes or no so if you are um, um, if particular computer is a part of airtel network they can communicate with each other because they are connected yes or no so now in order to access the facebook.com your in your airtel network should be connected with other network telenor network yes or no then it then only they can connect and access the facebook.com yes or no so so what happens is all the network all the isps means all the network of isps are connected with each other to form the internet if they are not connected you cannot access the website or any uh, system or server which are the part of different network isn't it so communication from one network to another network is called as internet net means network internetworking right communicating computers with each other one computer to another network computer we call as internetworking and connecting computer with same network will be networking so here it is internetworking isn't it means airtel network has connected with different network right so within the country within the country your airtel geo act all networks are connected with each other so you know what happens every isps have the domestic gateway for example these all internet uh, computers are connected to the airtel right now they are connected now airtel will have a domestic gateway domestic gateway domestic gateway which provide the connectivity to the other network yes or no these computer are connected to the airtel network now airtel will have the gateway using that gateway other isp within the countries are connected means airtel connected to geo airtel connected to act airtel is connected to uh, you know uh, uh, telenor or within the country right using the domestic gateway get a mind so now you can see your airtel network people who are connected to the airtel network computer who are connect which are connected to the airtel network can communicate to any computer which are communicate which are uh, you know connected with it with uh, geo which are connected with uh, you know uh, with act fiber net because all the network isps are connected with each other they all are have a domestic gateway and all the gateways are connected to each other which provide the connectivity so this connectivity communication is within the country yes or no understand so uh, but so that means either you connected to the airtel or you connected to geo you can communicate all each other right similarly similarly what happens is all the network all the isps within the countries are connected with each other other isps 
outside the country, international, right? And there is a gateway called as international gateway. Get in mind? One country network will connect with the other country network using the international gateway. Get in mind? Understand? So connectivity from one network to another network we call as internet. All the ISPs across the world are connected with each other, right? That we call as internet. So internet is not the property of anyone. Internet is the property of everyone because internet does not have single ownership, isn't it? Because all the network are connected with each other. They form the internet. It's not a property of anyone. That's the reason internet we also call as public network. Isn't it? Because it's a network of everyone. It's not a property of anyone. For example, Adel and you are from Peter, right? Or may have, maybe they are enemy of each other. Can they deny, okay, Adel is your competitor or, or it's an enemy. We will not connect Adel network. Geo cannot say that. We cannot connect the Adel network because, because Adel is our enemy. If you are not connected to any network, that means Adel people cannot access any website which, which is connected to the Geo network, then we will not call as internet. Yes or no? In the internet, all the computers, any computer can talk to any computer across the world if they are connected with the internet. All ISPs networks are connected with each other. That we call as internet. Understand? Understand? If you use the technical words, what happens is within your network, with for example, within company, within company, you have multiple computers, right? Within your company, you have multiple computers which are connected with each other. Yes or no? That we call as local area network. That means LAN. That we call as LAN. Within your local area network, local network, local company, right? All the computers are connected with each other to enable the communication. Those network, because computers connect with a network. Yes or no? And they are connected locally. That network we call as local area network. Get in mind? When all the networks are, uh, all the computers are connected with each other within the country, we call as, we call as man. When? We call as man, metropolitan area network, right? And one country to another country, we call as WAN wide area network but man word is has gone from the market nobody is using the van if you are connected locally to your company we call as lan if you connect to the internet we simply call as van means internet means van man words are not being used now either you use lan or van if you are part of company network connect to the company we call as lan it's a local area network within the company if you connect to the internet, we call it a WAN, wide area network. Because internet does not provide the connectivity within the country. It provides the connectivity to whole world, right? So it's not only a man, it's a WAN only, within the country only and outside also. That's the reason man word has been gone from the market. Nobody uses the man. We use LAN and WAN. Understand? So that we call as internet. So <clears throat> so now what will happen? One moment. Hmm. So now your ISP is connected with uh, you know uh, this Facebook, which has taken the internet connection from USA, right? So you know what happens. You know what happens? As I said, there is a gateway, right? All the, I mean, uh, one country to another country, we, there is a gateway to connect because international gateway. Not all the ISP within the country has the international gateway. There are many ISP which are the national player only. They do not have gateway to connect to the other countries. Because to connect with other country, of course, they need network means cables. Yes or no? Then only, for example, in India, 
this is the gateway of this is the gateway of USA, and this is the gateway of India. Yes or no? Means your ISP should have connected from here to here, from one national to another network. National, so this is the Indian gateway, this is the USA gateway. Now uh, you understand. Uh, after the India, we have ocean in between. Yes or no? So from one country to another country, how the connectivity happen? Is through cables or is through wireless? What do you think? It's a ocean in cable. between. Cable, cable, submarine cable. So which cables? Submarine. Fiber, submarine cable. Submarine call, right? cables. Optical fiber cable. optical cable. Fiber, yes. high bandwidth fiber optical cable has been deployed within the ocean. Right? So not every company has this kind of deployment. Initially, if you talk about in India, we had the VSNL, VSNL, Videsh Sanchar Legam Limited. VSNL was the only company which has this international gateway. Every company used to take this bandwidth on lease to provide their user to provide the internet communication from across the world, right? So VSNL was taken over by the Tata Communication. So later on, VSNL means Tata has the international gateway. The Reliance Communication also form. Now, Geo also have the international gateway. Many companies are now forming uh, and deploying the fiber optical cable. That's the reason nowadays internet is cheaper compared to previous days, right? Because previous day we used to use copper cables. Now we have fiber optical cable with faster connectivity. Previously, we had 512 kps speed. We have to download a movie. We will start downloading in the night. And maybe it will take one day, two days also download a single movies, right? Fiber optical provides the fastest connectivity, fiber optical cable, right? That's the reason now you have fiber net. Yes or no? And you get the faster connectivity, faster speed of the internet, isn't it? And it's cheaper also because fiber optical cable is fast and, uh, and many companies had deployed uh, their international gateway, right? But still there are some players like SSV, ACT, internet. They don't even have many of the ISP. They don't even have their local area, their, their network within the country also. They are the ISPs, but they take the bandwidth from other ISPs. Many of the ISPs like ACT Fibernet, SSV, right? They have taken the bandwidth from Railtrail or from Geo uh, or from Airtel. They have taken the bandwidth on release, right? And they are, they are giving their internet. They don't even have the local I mean, national gateway and national bandwidth also, internet also, but they are using other ISPs bandwidth. Right? Understand? So this communication is not happening wirelessly. The final communication is happening through cables only. That is why not wireless. Wireless is just for your comfort. So that, so that you have the freedom. Okay, I'm here. I will not have to stay connected to the cables. I'm here, I can still access. I'm here, I can still access, right? So the, the your connectivity is through wireless, but the final connectivity is through cables only. Understand? If wireless can do all the works, you will not see the road digging every day, everywhere. 5G uh, cables are being deployed. Why they are deploying the cable and setting up the, all those things? Because the final communication happening through cables only. So tower, so tower to your mobile, you have wireless. But towers are connected to each other mostly through cables. Yes or no? BT, one BTS to another BTS. They're connected using the cables only. Because why, why not wireless then? Because resistance is more. If you communicate from one tower to your mobile, there is huge resistance in between, right? What signal is being transmitted, same strength is not being received. Lot of resistance in between, air resistance, many things, resistance will come in between buildings. You have to, so not the whole strength you are receiving on the receiver side, mobile side, right? So it is just to uh, make you stay connected to the network. Uh, we have the wireless, but in wireless connectivity, strength also always degraded. You can observe at your home only, you have Wi Fi router, right? If you are close to Wi Fi router, you will get good strength. If you're a little away, you'll get the signal, but less strength. Speed also will be lesser because some packet drop is happening in between because of the resist resistance present on the air, right? If you connect to the cable, highest speed you'll get using the cable. Yes or no? Because cable, there is less resistance, right? 
So that is the reason the final communication is through cables and one national another network is also connected using the cables only. All your network device, security device, servers, application, databases, all are connected in the company through cables only. Only end user in the company like you, me and other, which are, who are working in the company, they may use Wi-Fi just to, you know, for your comfort so that you can sit somewhere here, sometime here, sometime here, sometime here and stick connected. Understand? But final communication is happening through cables only. Understand? So now, <clears throat> Facebook has taken the interconnection from Telenor, right? And you have taken from Airtel, right? So of course, okay, you have taken the internet connection, then what will happen? You understand? So now, uh, you got the internet connection. So you want to access the Facebook.com? Yes or no? Facebook.com. So you understand, I mean, along with your computer, there are billions of computers which are connected to the internet. So now this time, this com computer wants to communicate with this computer, accessing communication. Yes or no? So this computer wants to communicate with this computer, which is hosted in the US Facebook. Yes or no? So means you, this computer wants to talk to this computer means billions of such computers are available. So how this computer will ensure that I want to talk to this computer only, not to other computers because billions of computers are available on the internet. That means this computer should know this computer. If I want to talk to you, if you have so many people here, if I want to talk to Sivam, right? I cannot announce. I, oh, this person on the black shirt, I want to talk to this person on the black shirt, right? Maybe there are so many people who are coming black shirt, right? So I can identify you based on your name. Yes or no? I cannot announce. Okay, this, this is a, what I'm saying, uh, the black shirt and he can receive the communication, right? No, it is not going to work. Here, we are being identified by our name. Second thing, we have surname also. Maybe we have two Sivam. And Sivam Singh and Sivam Rajput Pandey, right? So we should surname. Similarly, see here it is very small area, right? So we don't have different people, right? But in the big area in the internet across the world, we have billions of computers. Yes or no? So how we can ensure that when I speak only this, when when I will talk. Only this computer will, will be participate in the communication, right? That means there should be some unique identity of each and every computer over the internet, right? So every computer should have a unique identifier using which I can ensure that, okay, this computer wants to communicate with the computer, so this computer only will speak. Yes or no? So unique identifier we call as unique address that we call as IP address. IP address. So every computer across the world if they are connected to the internet, they should have a unique address that we call as IP address. So IP addresses are unique addresses, right? Unique means what IP address your computer is having right now, which is connected to the internet, no other computer across the world have the same IP address. We can have multiple CVM, yes or no, here, but in internet, there won't be a uh, same IP and no, none of the computer can use the same IP, which, com which this, I this computer you're using right now. For example, this computer IP address is 199.0.2.100. So IP address is a four octet address, right? For example, 199.0.2.100, four, one octet, two, three, four, right? Two, one, two, three, four. Four octet address. So the kind of IP address, I mean, this IP, this computer has this particular IP address. No other computer across the world are using the same IP address at the same time. This is the only computer which has this IP address. Means at the same time, we cannot reuse the IP address. Any computer across the world cannot have the same IP address. That's why we call as IP addresses are always unique address. Get a mind? Similarly, Facebook also will get the IP address because it is also connected to the internet. Yes or no? So, for example, uh, uh, 210.5.2.105, right? This is the IP address of Facebook. 
right? So now this is also have the IP address and this also has the IP address. Yes or no? So once this computer communicate, so we can mention, okay, you have to communicate with this IP address. So both are having address. In internet communication, right? Both the computers should have their address because when you communicate with Facebook, right? Facebook ask, what is your address? Without both the computer, without having address, communication will not happen. Your name is Sivan. I can call Sivan. You can speak without knowing my name. But this computer is not going to communicate any unknown person, any unknown computer without having the IP address. That is the reason internet communication will only happen when you are connected to the internet and you are having the unique identifier, unique address that you call as IP address. Understand? Hi, sir. I have a question on this. Yes. Uh, you said the uh, IP address uh, is for Facebook, right? So IP address will be allotted to a particular computer or for a particular website? I will tell you. I will tell you. And this only uh, next uh, uh, in the session itself, this is going to clear. Okay. So, so what happens is now, once you connect to the internet, right? Once you connect to the internet. So for example, you connect to the internet, right? Uh, do you need to configure IP address? No, right? Automatically, once you take the internet connection, automatically IP address is being configured on your system. How it is. So you understand uh, that if you want to connect to the internet, you should have IP address. So there is a, so who manage this IP address? And IP address are not free. We have to buy the IP address. IP addresses are not free. We have to buy the IP address. There is an international authority we call as AINA. We call as AINA. International authority we call as AINA, which manage the series of IP addresses, which, which manage the IP addresses. Similarly, we in India, we have TRI, right? TRI, which manage the mobile number series. Yes or no? RTO we have, which manage the registration numbers. RTO. Right. Similarly, to manage the IP addresses, we have INA. You know what happens? So INA understand that IP address would be unique address. Yes or no? And uh, they have provided the combination four octet so that every computer should have a unique address. Get in mind? You know what happens? When first time uh, we bought mobile in 2000, 2000, in 2000. 2004, 2004, our number, mobile number was, in 2004, we got a mobile, our mobile number was, just three digit number, a six digit number. In 2004, in 2006, 2006, every mobile number has become 10 digit. In our mobile number, it has it 9300. Five zero five six eight three. Why try has added four more digits in the mobile number? Because in four digit, uh, six digit, less number of mobile number can be created. Because in 2006 one words, you know, uh, many people started buying mobile and taking the connections. Then there'll be shortage of numbers. So 10 digit, you'll have more permutation and combination. Compared to six digit, means more mobile number can be created. Yes or no? Compared to six digit. Yes or no? So in IP address also, IP address was four digit IP address, four octet, that we call as IPv6, IPv4. There is a version in IP, IP, IPv4. Why? Because it is four octet address. One, two, three, four. 0.0.0.0.255.255.255. Four octet address that we call IPv4. So initially, we had IPv4. Now, I never realized that digitalization is happening, uh, you know, uh, uh, digitalization is uh, you know, being happening very fast. Digitalization is happening very fast. Everything is now becoming digital. You have a computer, smart devices, yes, you know, IOTs that we call as every devices, every mobile now have the internet means required IP address. Yes or no? So this four digit, a four octet IP address may not be sufficient to provide the unique address on each and every 
स्मार्ट डिवाइसेस कंप्यूटर्स ये सुनो देन टू प्रोवाइड मोर मोर परमिटेशन एंड कॉम्बिनेशन दे हैव लॉन्च आईपी वर्जन आईपी वर्जन आईपीवी सिक्स नाउ आईपी सिक्स इज नॉट ओनली द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ नंबर्स बट इज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ऑफ नंबर्स एंड कैरेक्टर्स मींस अल्फा न्यूमेरिक एंड इट इज सिक्स कैरेक्टर्स सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन वन मिनट हां सो नाउ इट इज सिक्स ऑक्टेट एड्रेस इज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ अल्फा न्यूमेरिक्स मोर परमिटेशन एंड कॉम्बिनेशन कैन बी क्रिएटेड कैट माइंड यस सर आईपीवी फोर IPv4 like it's uh uh it reflects like the country code and then the second one is a state and the third one is IST and the fourth one is uh could be a MAC address in that case if no, no, it is IPv no, 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 MAC address no 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 MAC address is not at all associated with this I'm sorry your computer uh, can also have same address uh, no, no, no yeah not address. MAC address the the person who is uh, who took the internet connection from ISP the last one right. belongs but if it is IPv6 hmm. then uh, what it will be sir I'm just asking I don't know I mean just a curiosity I mean this is this is not based on ISPs or based on see this is the AINA whatever series free. they can assign to any of the isps it it does not give the information of isp the ip address do not give the information of isp whoever wants to buy whoever wants to buy they can go to uh, aina aina will see the specific series and they will assign to this isps and they will note it down to whom they have assigned get right it is not based on the isp if i buy the ip address right now i have the connection from airtel i can switch to the you also with the same same ip address get right so it is not dependent on the isp the because the isp this is separate series the ip this is separate series it is aina if you bought this series means it is under your ownership understand but it is not dependent on the isps okay got it so uh, as we discuss with six digit more permutation and combination will be created so it is aina like in telecom you have tried india which manage the mobile number series and allocation of mobile numbers similarly international because ip address are unique address across the globe so the internet authority we call as aina which manage the allocation of ip addresses as i mentioned ip addresses are not free means we have to buy the ip address for your computer but personally you don't have to buy yourself isps are buying the ip address on behalf of you There is a specific cost for each and IP address, each and every IP addresses, right? So, for example, if particular IP address cost is five thousand, particular IP address cost is five thousand. In this specific case, Airtel has five lakhs of user, five lakhs of users, right? Then, how many IP they have to buy? Five lakhs of because each and every computer connected to the internet should have the unique IP address. Yes or no? That we call as IP address. So five lakhs of computer, five thousand, uh, five lakhs of computer, five thousand into five lakhs, huge amount. And you understand when you take the internet connection, ISPs are not separately charging the cost of IP addresses. Yes or no? Then how the allocation, how how Airtel can manage five lakhs of computers means they have to buy the five lakhs of IP address, isn't it? Then Airtel has done some kind of trend analysis. Airtel has done some kind of trend analysis to check how many users are using the internet, connecting to the internet at the same time. Out of five lakhs user, when Airtel has done the trend analysis, Airtel came to know that not all five lakhs of user are using the internet at the same time. That means not all user are connected to the internet at the same time, connecting to the internet at the same time. As per the observation, maximum two lakhs users are connecting in the afternoon, in the morning around one point five. And one point five around night time. I mean, maximum out of five lakhs, maximum two lakhs of users are connected at the same time. 
Did I mind? Understand? Understand? Then Airtel came to know a concept we call a DSCP. DSCP, Dynamics Host Configuration Protocol. Get a mind? Understand? Airtel has, see, FileX computer means FileX of IP address. See, whenever you are training, you focus on the training only, right? Do not think about your job, what will happen. You have to join by 10 o'clock what your boss said, right? When you are training, you have to focus and you think you have to think about the concept only, right? Focus should be here only. If you your focus is somewhere else, then you understand. So what I'm saying is, file of computer means file of IP address. So Airtel has some kind done some kind of trend analysis and came to know not all file of computers are connecting to the internet at the same time. Maximum two lakhs of users are connecting in the afternoon. Morning 1.5 something and night 1.5. That means maximum two lakhs of IPs are using at the same time. So why to buy a file X of IP address? <clears throat> so can we reutilize the IP address? So Edel has done, uh, came to know a concept called a DSCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Get a mind? Dynamic Host co Configuration Protocol to reutilize re the IP address. Now, what will happen is, instead of buying 5 lakhs of IP address, Airtel has bought only 2,50,000 IP address. Not, not 2 lakhs, but 2,50,000 to make some room. DSCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, so, so Airtel has set up, Airtel had done the setup of DSCP server. There's a server called DSCP server. So instead of buying 5 lakhs of IP, Airtel has bought 250,000 IP and put the IPs on the DSCP server. Yes or no? So as soon as dynamic host configuration, the name is dynamic host configuration protocol. Dynamic host. Dynamic means host are not static. Sometimes they are connecting, sometimes they're not connecting. Yes or no? You call it dynamic. Dynamic motion, you understand, right? Dynamic motion. Gati, Gati seal. So, what will happen is now it will have boss 2,50,000 IP and put on the DSCP server. Now, once you take, you, you have taken the internet connection, right? Internet connection. Once you connect to internet, your request will go to the DSCP server on ISP. So, it has put all this IP here. So automatically, dynamically, you call automatically one available IP address will be allocated and assigned to your computer. Randomly, out of 250,000 IP address, randomly one available IP address will be assigned to your computer. Till the time you are connected to the internet, the IP will remain with you, with your computer. Once you disconnect the internet, 2 lakhs of users are connected, right? In the afternoon time, once they will connect, I put a, here, I'll put with you. Once they've disconnect the user, uh, internet, the IP automatically will release and go back to the DC pool. And it is available now to reuse for any other user. Yes or no? So using DSCP concept, we can reutilize the IP address, same IP address. Because we said that same IP address cannot be used by other computer at the same time. But when it was using the same IP cannot be used. But when this computer stop using it, the IP address will get, get released and will be available in the DSCV pool. And once other computer connected, maybe randomly available IP, same IP may be assigned to other computer. So in this case, we can reutilize the IP addresses. Because there's a cost involved, right? There's a cost involved in IP addresses. So you are ISP, can reutilize the IP address using the DSCP concept. So you have to configure, Adel has to configure DSCP server. You should have buying 5 lakhs of IP. Adel has just buy 2, 2 lakh 50,000 because Adel has done the trend analysis and came to know 2 lakhs of user content at the same time. But to make some room, maybe sometime 2 lakh 20,000, 2 lakh 25,000, 30,000. It should not happen that you bought 2 lakh of IP address and all 2 lakhs are being used. 
then two leg first user is connecting then he will not get the ip address then you will not be able to communicate in the internet if you are connected but you are connecting but connection will not get established until unless your system get the ip address your connection will get failed because your dhcp server will be unable to allocate ip address and without ip address you cannot connect to the internet isn't it yes or no so that's the reason airtel will make some room so that it will not happen that some more you are connected and they are not able to come use the internet isn't it so using the dhcp concept right airtel has saved the cost of 250000 ip address by reutilizing the ip addresses understand so using dhcp you can reutilize the ip addresses your airtel has reut that is the reason airtel is no your isp is not charging you separately for ip addresses charge do you think that bill it is written ip address charge no because whatever you are paying little cost of ip address is included on your bill they are not charging separately for example you have 800 rupees per month plan right on the plan itself little cost of ip address is also included but they are not charging separately understand so you think, so one one more one more um, advantage of having this dhcp is the, the name itself dynamic host configuration protocol means using this protocol dynamically automatically ip address can be configured to your system means you you do not have to configure ip address manually get it automatically do you think that whenever you have to connect your call to call to internet service provider and ask them to configure ip address or what is my, why what ip address I should, I should configure you're not asking right because you are not bother about what ip address i should configure any ip because for communication you need any ip address you are not bother about what what ip has been configured to my system i should have one one ip address but what ip address we are not bother about isn't it so you are not calling to isp to ask them what ip address i should configure or how to configure the ip address because using dhcp once you click on connect or once you plug in the cable on your ethernet port on the system automatically the your system will initiate a request to the dhcp server of isp right and it will allocate an ip assign configure an ip address automatically so that is another advantage another advantage of having dhcp server that you don't have to configure ip address manually yes or no your wi-fi router you are using right wi-fi router you also having dhcp server once you connect automatically one ip address will be allocated to your system automatically using the dhcp server understand so in this case you understand in this case in this case you need not to configure and uh, ip address manually as well as in this case you are not bother about what ip address my system is using so if your system is having uh, 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 being assigned ip address dynamically using dhcp this kind of ip address we call as dynamic ip ip addresses are of two type again first of all we understand version ip version 4 and ip version 6 these are version of ip addresses now ip addresses are of two type static ip and dynamic ip dynamic ip dynamic ip is the ip address right which is dynamically being assigned using dhcp server and may not be with your computer all the time. Till the time you are connected to the internet, IP address will remain in your computer. Once you disconnect, it will release and can be reutilized by any other computer. This kind of IP address is called a dynamic because this is not a static with your computer. It's dynamic, right? Sometimes your computer, then another computer. Next time you've got another computer, another IP address. But these IP address are dynamic in nature, isn't it? Dynamic means good seal. Dynamic, yes or no? These IP address we call a dynamic IP address. Now, another type of IP address that we call as static IP address. Sir, one question. Hmm. The DHP server is maintained by IANA. Who will your each individual service provider has ISP, ISP. ISP has bought a server uh, IP address, right? And deploy yeah. the DHCP server on their own premises, on their network. Whatever IP they had bought. The series of IP address they have put in that their own DHCP server. Okay. Okay. So now what is the use of static IP then? 
dynamically IP address being assigned. What is user static IP address? You understand? IP address is the address of the computer, isn't it? If you are connected to the internet, it's a unique identifier of your computer, which we call as IP address. Okay, fine. So now, for example, <clears throat> you want to communicate with another computer. For example, this is Facebook.com. Facebook.com has the IP address 201.0.2.100. So you understand? To allow end-to-end -end communication, if one computer wants to communicate with the other computer, both the computer they have should have their own IP address, should have the IP address. This computer wants to connect with Facebook. Facebook also should have the IP address. You understand? Facebook is not going to initiate the connection. They are not going to talk to you. You always access the Facebook.com. Means you only raise the request and go to the Facebook. Yes or no? But yeah, if you want to send a letter to anybody, you should know the address, right? So whoever sent the letter, that person should have a fixed address. Then only letter can be sent. Yes or no? Letter coming from anywhere. But other person should have a fixed address. Then only letter can be delivered. Similarly, your address can be anything. Your IP address can be anything. But Facebook should have the fixed address, fixed IP address. For example, if Facebook also have using are using dynamic address, what will happen? Right now, your computer is know the Facebook operator is this one. It will send the packet and communication to this IP address. IP address will get changed sometime. Then communication will not happen. Yes or no? See, McDonald's in HSR layout in Bangalore. McDonald's. You are coming from Marathali. You are coming, some people coming from, coming from uh, you know, BTM layout. McDonald's address is in HSR layout sector 1. People coming from different, so uh, uh, last week, you, you generally used to come and buy MACD from HSR layout, right? <clears throat> from BTM layout. Now you shifted to Marathalli. Is there any issue with McDonald's? No, right? You are staying in BTM layout, still you can come and buy. And you shifted to Marathalli, still you can come and buy. Means your address can be changed, no problem. Yeah, means your IP address can be changed. But... What will happen is MACD will change the address. You will not come to know and you will not come to know what is the address you cannot reach and buy. Isn't it? Otherwise, every time McDonald's have to tell and announce that, okay, I have changed my address. Means we'll have to announce, but sometime one year, two years, three years it can change, but not every day, not every month. Otherwise, some extra effort has to be put. Yes or no? Isn't it? So MACD cannot change the address like dynamic every time. MACD should have fixed address. Otherwise, people will not be able to reach. Similarly, any for example, web, web application, web server, website should have the fixed address. Your Facebook have the fixed address. Same expert website should have a fixed address. They cannot change every time. That means they should have a static IP address. If you want any application, any server should be available for public across the internet. They should have a fixed address. They should have a fixed IP address so that people can reach and communicate anytime. If address will get changed, communication will not happen because uh, uh, people will not come to know the IP address or every time you have to announce the IP address. I will tell you how they can announce. It does not mean that they can never change the IP address. Sometimes IP address will change, but they have to announce to everyone that I have changed the IP address. If they will not announce, their business will get stopped. Isn't it? So these... For any application, any website you want to deploy, right? You should have a fixed address. Means static IP address. Understand? We we want to give the access to our lab server, right? So we have to configure fixed IP address. So we have the static IP address here. Otherwise, every time I get a change, I'll have to tell them, but yeah, today IP is this one. Today IP is this one every time. Lot of effort, right? So in this case, we have to go with the static IP address. So when you take the internet connection, dynamic IP address free means it's sub some charge, little charge involved, but they're not charging extra ISP. But in some in this situation, I have to go with the static IP address. So I have to pay the extra cost. So either IP address you can buy permanently from the ISP. So next time if you change the ISP also, uh, you can attach your IP address to any of the ISP. 
right mobile number portability you have yes or no you can change the now uh, mobile numbers for telecom service provider still you will have same number similar similarly ip address portability if you bought the ip address permanently you can sometime you can do this ip address uh, this this isp if you change it also you will have same ip address so ip address either you can permanently permanently the cost will be huge high so here uh, uh, r is lab right so we can buy the ip address subscribe the ip address monthly basis also monthly or yearly basis right so we should have ip address here also so i have bought the ip address based on monthly so uh, almost 3300 rupees 300 indian rupees plus tax we have to pay over and above that the plan uh, internet plan that we have we have to pay 300 plus tax extra for the static ip address understand right the difference so static ip address is the address ip address which remain configured to your system all the time even you are using not using nobody else across the world can use the same ip address anytime because it is your ip address isp cannot utilize it isp see the okay if you buying that static ip address will not reuse it means we, this ip address will not be there in the, in the dscp server it's a static ip address only if it is allocated to your name only you can use it whether you are using or not using it till the time you have paid for the ip address will remain configured and remain used in your system only understand understand right so there are two types of dynamic and static so dynamic ip address the ip address ip address which will be there in the system till the time you are connected and it may be reutilized by other computer when you disconnect means once you disconnect it will go back to the dscb pool okay so you want to write the definition that's right there are two types of ip addresses there are two types of ip addresses so are we buying the static ip address or we are uh, paying rent to make it my own so as i said there are two ways either you can buy it permanently or you can subscribe monthly basis from isp if you buy it the ip addresses ownership will be yours if you buy okay then the cost will be higher cost will be higher of course if you subscribe, then ownership will be of ISP, but monthly basis you have to pay the charge, right? So our is just for the lab, right? So we have not buy the IP address, we are paying monthly subscription charges, right? The ownership you check on the internet, it will be ISP ownership. But when you buy the IP address permanently, the IP address will be allocated to your name. And if anybody check on the internet, this IP belongs to whom? They can check your company name. They can see their company name, understand? Clear? But if I but if I shut down the company, suppose after ten years, mm -hmm. then uh, what will happen? Are they going to use the this IP address? I mean the ISP. So it depends. If you buy it permanently, sometimes you buy it for one year, ten years, five years, like this. Ten years. If you bought it, if you are not renewing it, then it will go go back to the uh, Ina. It will go back. Oh, to the Ina. Okay. If you are not Thank paying. you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sir, I have one query. Uh, uh, means uh, on particular one server, uh, is it possible to host uh, multiple website on one server? Multiple website? Yes, sir. It is. Po See what happens. I will tell you what. You know what happens uh, because I have not explained you till now. Multiple website in one physical server you host, then you will host on different port. Port number you don't do right now. That's the reason okay. I'm not explaining you. Mm -hmm. For example, website we access on HTTP 443, right? Okay. Two applications cannot use the same port at the same time. If mm -hmm. port is allocated to one website, you cannot okay. deploy other website the same port number. Okay. Okay. So physical okay. server, you cannot access two website, but if you have virtual, virtual server, if you have created, then you can do that in virtual server. Okay. Website, Mister, uh... you can deploy. website, you can deploy multiple, but you okay. cannot access from outside. Mm -hmm. you know, on the same, you got HTTPS website is 443 port number. So two okay. websites cannot be hosted on the same port number. I will tell you what is port number on the later part. You ask little early. So 
I'll deep, I will explain you what is port number. Okay, sir. Thank okay, you. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, when it comes to dynamic um, um, IP address, like you said, it's not permanent for like, let's say my house computer. Right. So, you know, like sometimes um, you might have bad actors that may be stealing or whatever with their computer. And since the number is not permanent for their own computer and it goes back to the um, D, um, the DHC, um, the DHCP, so how could they find out like, oh, at a certain time, um, this particular computer was the one that um, maybe stole from the bank or something like that? See what happens, I mean, uh, I did not get your question fully. Because when you are the home viewer, when you are the home viewer, you are not bothered about what is your IP address. You are bothered about whether you are able to access the internet or not. Did you check ever home people? If you yeah, are... no, no. I mean, like if the cops want to investigate, if... since the IP number is not directly for this particular computer, uh -huh. how could they find out? Because it's not particular for this right. computer. Okay. So what happens? Uh, understand. For investigation perspective, right? Who has done the crime? So what will happen mm -hmm. is your computer got the iPad with DSCP server. So the DSCP server will keep the record. Particular time, particular IP was allocated to which computer. Get in mind? Which computer? Because ISP has given the interconnections to you and they have taken your KYC document already. Know your customer. Yes or no? They know that mm -hmm. this IP at this time has been assigned to Sachin. So if some crime happened, right? Sachin has done it. So if your DSCP will create a record and generate the logs. Particular time, particular IP has been what, what had been allocated to which computer. Understand? And which computer I mean, yes. customer based on customer ID address, and they can keep their can have their all record of their customer. That's the reason they are taking your your ID proof, right? ID address proof, so that uh, you cannot commit any such kind of activities. Okay, thank you. I'll tell you. I'll cover it here. Okay, got it? Clear? So, uh, what I was telling? Hmm. Uh, I was asking you to write. There are two types of IP address, dynamic IP address and static. Let's write what is dynamic address. Dynamic IP address is the IP address. which will be assigned, which will be assigned, which will be assigned dynamically, or sorry, automatically, which will be assigned automatically, which will be assigned automatically using the DSCP server. Using the DHCP server. So DHPC or DSP? DHCP. DHCP. Using the DH dynamic host configuration protocol DHCP. DHCP. I uh, dynamic I it is the I dynamic IP address IP address which will be which will be. We assign automatic. Yeah. Automatically using the DSC server. Uh, dynamic header is the IP address. It's IP address will be assigned okay. automatically okay. using the DSCP server. Using the DSCP server, right? And till the time we are connected to the internet, till the time the computer is connected to the internet. The computer is connected to the internet. The IP address will remain with your computer.
and once you disconnect and once you disconnect once you disconnect the ip address will go back to the dsv pool the ip address will go back to the dsv pool where it can be reutilized and can be allocated to any other computer can be utilized and can be allocated to any other computer Understand? Sir, understand? I have a question. Sir. In short, in short, in short, in short, in short, you please. In short, you understand. Dynamic means you have the HTTP pool. You once you connect to the internet, you'll get the IP address dynamically. Once you disconnect, it will go, go back to DSCP pool and will be available for other computer. Randomly, you have multiple IP addresses randomly. Your IP address also can be assigned to other computer once you disconnect from here. It will be available. Any other computer connect, request will go to the DSCP server. And randomly, it can assign same IP also to other computer because you are not using it now. It has been released from your computer. Understand? Yes. So yes. the DSCP server will also be having a static address, also, static IP address. At the, of course, of course, DSCP server will have the static IP address. And if and suppose if DSCP server wants to communicate with the Facebook, both are static, then how they will communicate? So, what? what? If suppose DHCP server wants to communicate with the Facebook, so Why? Facebook. Uh, now I'm asking. Connect means now you open the DHCP server because DHCP uh, services, right? The application, one server you have to configure on which you have to install, you have installed DHCP, right? A server, then you have to open the browser on DHCP server and connect to the Facebook. Get a mind? Understand? Okay. Because Facebook yes, is accessible on the browser only, right? So you have to open the browser on the DSCP server, then access it. Understand? But generally, in this server, we do not allow to access an external website. These are critical servers, right? If you allow access, uh, servers are same as your system only. I will tell you in the later part, if you are not clear, servers are same as your system. You have your, your desktop, right? CP, uh, CPU cabinet? Similarly, servers. But servers, we deploy applications such as Facebook, simexpert.com, right? And those uh, applications should be available 24 by 7, isn't it? Understand? And our normal systems you use for home use, home use perspective, they have limited features. And there are Windows 8, Windows 11, 10, 11, right? But server hardware, you also a little different than your desktop. Little different because server hardware has been designed so that the, the server can run 24 by 7. You, desktop CPU pro processor, you cannot run 24 by 7, right? Otherwise, it will get burned. It will become hot and will get burned, right? Server hardware, use the same resources like hard disk, memory, CPU, and everything, but has been designed in such a way so that it can run 24 by 7, 365 days. As well as, the, that is the hardware. It's the same time of hardware, but the only thing is it has been designed in such a way uh, it can run 24 by 7. It has uh, inbuilt uh, uh, fan, more capacity fan as well as you have to ensure you have cooling facility, ACs and everything because they run 24 by 7 and generate a lot of heat. Understand? So, but similar resource, but resource will be more CPU also, maybe more than 100 GB of memory. CPU also maybe uh, 16 core, 32 core, more than that because they will use more resources because the application which I installed Facebook, right? For example, same expert, many people are accessing when you access memory or CPU utilization, for home use, you normally, for computer, personal computer use, less utilization, less memory, less CPU. But the machine is similar, similar only, but they have more resources to handle the increased load. 
and the hardware has been designed in such a way so that uh, you know uh, uh, it can run 20 plus 7 understand similarly operating system in windows operating system your windows 10 and 11 they have limited feature to operate your uh, uh, cpu right your cabinet uh, this machine that you have right hardware they have limited, limited feature but server required more feature so that's the operating system also for laptop desktop we call a work station operating system such as windows 10 windows 8 windows 11 to operate server we have server operating system such as windows server 2012 windows server 2016 2019 and linux servers operating system because they have more feature so whenever we deploy any application which need access which are enterprise level application we should have a server hardware as well as server operating system get in mind so if you look look at a server so i will show you right away uh, sir so can i can i tell you one thing like uh, uh, what i understand yes go ahead uh, like uh, the uh, whatever you are uh, you told about uh, windows 10 and windows 11 that's a client operating system which is going to be used by only one person but the servers are going to be used by many people like they will be accessing the uh, connections to the many but people right? they have so, they have yeah so that's why it is going to be very high right the resources and the configuration part when you see that it should be load balancing things which has to be there yeah correct okay done because a lot of load and it has to run 20 by 7 right yeah and it required more functionality because simple workstation do not require much much functionality to general use but uh, uh, when you are deploying any application which has to be accessed by outside user it required more functionality so yeah. operating system also has more features right yes you can yes. see it here if i uh, you can see this is one server this is one server you can see this is server i'll take the remote access this server is having static ip address this local ip address i will tell you what is private ip address having static ip address if I get IP address has changed every time I have to use a different IP address, I'm taking the remote access to my server. That in mind. So this is the server which I'm taking the remote access. You can see one minute, huh? it is some extra application which have been deployed. It looks like you can see it looks like your Windows, Windows desktop only. Yes or no? Whatever feature, whatever function you have in desktop operating system, right? Windows 11, 10, all feature having server operating system also. You can see it is Windows Server 2012 R2. It looks like you can see all feature desktop, Windows C drive, D drive, all. But it's a server. It has more function. You can see server manager. Server manager, how to manage different applications, right? You have it on your desktop? No. Yes or no? So it has more functionality compared to your normal server and it has high memory we have more than this server i have assigned 256 gb of ram 256 in your laptop or desktop you cannot extend 256 if you bought 8 gb you can be able to 60 gb 32 db but it does not have capability to handle 256 gb of ram yes or no 256 divided by 4 how much it is 256 divided by 4, around 60, uh, 63, 62, 63, right? Means it is equal to 63 laptop with 4 GB RAM. This server has the capability. And also, your system comes with dual core, means two core operating system or four core operating system. Even four core server, server CPU or four core your workstation CPU. So server CPU is more powerful compared to workstation. So you generally get two core CPU, four core. This server has 56 core CPU processor to process any request, right? Means it's having high capacity. Understand? So I can deploy any website. I have to deploy a website. I can deploy it. Any enterprise level of tool I want to use, I can deploy it. Similarly, our SIM tools also we have deployed in such servers. And this server run 20 work on 365 days. Desktop laptop we cannot run. Understand? That's the difference. It looks like, looks like same only, right? Isn't it? Looks like same only like your desktop. But it run 20 over 7. I have more resource. I can deploy any website. And people from outside can access any application I can deploy. And people can access it anytime. In this server, more than 300 people can concurrently log in. That is another feature. 
more than 300 people can log in in this server remote. How I'm taking remote access, right? Similarly, 300 people can take the remote access like this at the same time, and they will get different desktop. It's not something that all log in together and all are working together and can they see each other. No, separate desktop they will get. In Windows, only one remote connection. If I'm using right now, nobody else can log in. In desktop operating system, in server operating system, by default, three people can access, but if you buy extra license, so I have the license of 300 people. So 300 people can access the server remotely anytime, concurrently, and will get the separate desktop. Understand? So that we call a server. So any website, any application, which require multiple access, we deploy on the server, which require to run 24 by 7. And such applications support only server because they need some extra functionality which desktop application does not have. Desktop is for end users only, not for deploying any tool or application, only for end user, not for hosting any application. Understand? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah, so uh, static you have written static not written, right? That's right. What is static? Yeah, excuse me, sir. Yes. Yeah, so uh, DHCP server want to connect Facebook, then it will be open one Chrome browser and it will connect. Same, to see, same server I have shown you, right? For yes, example, but DHCP. Facebook have a static IP address too, sir. Ah. Once it's uh, disconnected, then uh, it it is not going to address other IP address. Like how you can access my server remotely 300 people. Similarly, mm -hmm. Postmates, Postmates application can be accessed by billions of people. Okay. At the same time. For example, DSCP server, DSCP application server has been deployed in my server, right? It's already deployed. I can log in, take a remote log in my server, and I can open the browser and access the Facebook also. Understand? Like normal desktop, I can open the browser and access to Facebook.com. Yes, sir. Got not, it. It's not realistic, actually. Somebody asked the question in the same. It's not realistic. Why we access Facebook one server? Is it for time pass server? No, right? So if you, you can access any website, any website, sometime, for example, DSCP server, some kind of update came that you have to download from internet. So I may log in on a DSCP server and undownload from the browser and update. But generally on the servers, internet access is not allowed. Apart from the targeted connections, me target audience, particular communication will allow, all open internet access will not be allowed. That mind, if any update also you have to download, download from your desktop, Take the remote access and then transfer, paste, copy to your server. And direct internet access is not allowed on a server. Because direct internet means anybody, how you access the facebook.com, you can access a malicious site also. Yes or no? So malware will get downloaded, server will get infected. Your server, your system get infected, not much, much issue. But if server got infected, server means many application, critical application, all your proprietary data, customer information, user information, debit card, credit card information on the on the companies. All are on server application. All will get compromised. Isn't it? That's the reason server will have restricted access to the internet. Only audience which user we have to allow and for update and all which company site we have to allow only those specific internet access will be given. Understand? Not the full access. You cannot open the email on the server. You cannot access any such website on the server. You cannot use USB on the server. Understand? I will get in, it will get compromised. Clear? It's a physical server. And cloud also can you can use. Now people are using cloud also, right? The server, if you're talking about it, it can be physical server. If you're talking about how, hardware, right? It's a physical server on which we have installed server operating system. Means I have got a physical server, physical hardware. And on which to operate the hardware, we have used Windows operating system. So instead of Windows, I will have multiple operating systems such as uh, Linux, I have uh, Mac, right? 
मल्टीपल ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम वी हैव टू ऑपरेट इट अंडरस्टैंड ठीक वॉट हैपन से चलो अब मैं बता देता हूं आपको दिस इज द हार्डवेयर ऑफ योर सर्वर दिस इज दिकॉज सीपीयू कैबिनेट यू हैव सीन राइट वर्क स्टेशन सीपीयू सेम काइंड ऑफ हार्डवेयर यू हैव ऑन विच इन साइड यू हैव मदर बोर्ड मदर बोर्ड काइंड ऑफ चिप and inside that you have processor cpu inside you have ram right you have ram and you have hard disk and in digital computer digital device runs using these three resources what are those three resources your cpu for example ram cpu and disk means storage these are the food these are the food of your heart computer you eat food right more and more food you will more and more energy calories you get right similarly these digital devices also if you if you assign more and more resources more and more work they can do they have more mem less memory less cpu they cannot do much work I mean their food is ram cpu and disk what is the use of so you can see this is a physical physical hardware cpu cabinet can kind of inside your motherboard on which you have some chips chip like velasi chip right inside mean processing to communicate you don't have so many wires right single chip single this kind of pcb and where connection has been done so that you you and we won't have to use physical cables to connect yes or no so this chip all you have so what is happening this is hardware right this server can do anything you can access any application anything you can do this is a machinery hardware now you want to start and do some work then what do you think that you open the cabinet and start to operate this means this particular hardware can do anything much work you can do so many work you understand right what you can do right now with your computer you open the excel you have ppt yes or no you deploy any application access facebook right all work is done by the hardware so if you want to access facebook.com what do you do do you open this hardware and click on facebook no right so it's a hardware right if we start or do something you have to do but it is very small chip if you have to do manually then if all all functionality you have to enable manually here using buttons and something then computer will will become the size like your 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 uh, this one room room size yes or no that's the reason you cannot operate this functionality of your computer physically then how we can operate using the operating system operating system using the operating system to operate this ha hardware we have to deploy operating system operating system has the graphical interface windows 7 ud windows 8 9 10 server these are operating system which have the graphical interface use the graphical interface means what functionality your hardware is having mean what what work your hardware can do your operating system has the option here to perform this activity once you do something here using windows 8 10 11 server it send a command to your hardware and hardware run this process the request at the end hardware has to do work but instruction is given by this software operating system this operating system right so operating system give the command and it, it get operated so you can see all the functionality on the operating system yes or no so operating system is nothing it's a which operate the hardware using you know operating system we are actually operating the hardware means we cannot perform any functionality which this hardware is not capable enough understand so whatever capability this hardware having see that functionality all only you can perform using this this open system yes or no so there might be possibility one moment there might be possibility that uh, your hardware is having some more functionality can perform but this operating system has less functionality means less option you have then still you cannot do still you cannot do for example if this hardware you have you have deployed you have this is server hardware but you deploy 
desktop operating system, Windows 8. So it does not have functionality which your server can perform more functionality. You can still run only desktop usage only. You cannot perform server capability. So, so server operating system will have more capability. So you may have to deploy server operating system so that you can take that advantage of other capability. For example, this hardware is desktop hardware, less resources, less, less functionality. If you install server here, you cannot achieve all the functionality of server because your, your hardware is not capable enough. Yes or no? So your operating system, name itself as operating system, which operate the system. Operating system, nothing, but it's a user interface which can help you to operate your hardware. Generally, people read the definition, operating system is nothing but the uh, interface between the software and user. Between the hardware and user. Between the hardware, it's open system. It is between you, you and hardware. It's open system between you and hardware. But many people do not understand actually. They learn this. They go on through the definition. Open system nothing but the interface between the hardware and user. Yes or no? But now you understand how it is interface between user and hardware. You use this. You have functionality, get it, it will run the command here and give the detailed result here. Understand? I'll ask you, I will take your question. Just give me a few minutes. So now you can see, for example, this is a Windows, Windows operating system. Windows operating system is, is being, uh, you know, developed by Microsoft. It has functionality to run this. It has this, this all this option. Now there are various vendors, manufacturer developers, which are developing operating system. You have Linux operating system. Linux is again an operating system only. This is the hardware is same, right? Instead of Windows, you can deploy Linux also. Linux also can perform the same capability. But maybe different, different ways to perform. Yes or no? Sometimes some operating system has some functionality, some operating system does not have. But at the end, operating system can perform any activity which your hardware supports. But sometimes it happens that Windows you deploy, it has less, some, func some functionality it does not have. Linux you deploy, it has some, some more functionality. For a job, it may happen. But they cannot do any functionality their own only. Their hardware should support. Yes or no? Understand? So this vendor can be different. You have Linux, you have Mac, you have uh, Ubuntu on the Linux only, right? You have Windows Server 2016, 2019, different, different versions. Or all are operating system which operate at the end the hardware only. Understand? Linux? We have different GUI, different interface, more, mostly used by commands only. But once you run the command, the command will be executed on the hardware only by, by this operating system. I don't know. In Windows, you have GUI. You can click, 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 click. Understand? But at the end, command is going to run on the means your operating system is going to instruct hardware only. The processing will happen on the hardware. Understand? Now you can ask the question. So that was not a question, actually. Uh, uh, that was uh, my expression, like operating system and the hardware actually is a mind and brain. Our brain is the hardware and our mind is the operating system. What we think, we command to our brain and he works like the way we want him to work. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, Thank fine. you. Correct. So you understand, right? Now, this hardware how we evaluate how powerful is this hardware, how much work this, this hardware can do. Yes or no? Particular person have their own capability, right? Similarly, this hardware, if I want to take, I want to take more use, same functionality but more use. So how we can evaluate? If I want to take the more same work, but more work, powerful work I want to take, right? So how we can evaluate the capability of this hardware? For example, I have given, I have given this work. I have given, okay, this uh, do one thing, this perform this command every one minute. Perform this work every one minute, one time. But now I have asked to perform every every minute 50 times. I mean 50 times more work. So does this hardware capable enough to perform that much increased work? How we can evaluate the performance and the capability of the hardware using these three things? What are, those, what are those that you have written? RAM. CPU and disk. Uh, disk space. RAM core. RAM. 
RAM code, CPU, CPU and this is the board. CPU. This, right. So this hardware, the power of hardware, this computer comes with these three resources, RAM, CPU, and disk. Let's understand now when your computer will use RAM, for what purpose do you use CPU, and what purpose it use disk. Sometimes you see your computer is slow, your computer is getting hanged. What is the reason? Sometimes you cannot install more application in the system because uh, RAM is high utilization on your mobile. RAM utilization is high, you cannot open multiple application. If you're meant opening multiple application, your system is getting hanged, getting delayed, slow. Sometimes you have to reboot your system. So why you are doing so, right? First of all, you understand, disk means storage. Means everything in your system, whatever software you install, whatever uh, you know data you keep, will be stored on the disk, means storage. It will have disk, disk means storage. Yes or no? For example, you install an application. See, in enterprise application, so install, for example, Google Chrome. Google Chrome install, it will be around 500 MB. Because it's an application to access the Facebook and other application, right? People are not using your Chrome. Only you are using, right? Enterprise applications such as Facebook, simexpert.com, facebook.com, right? Many people are keeping their data. Yes or no? And doing some different, different work. So size will become huge. Similarly, for example, enterprise, Splunk you are installing, Splunk. Splunk, it has many functionality. Tool you're installing, it has many functionality. Many people can log in and it has searching, reporting, dashboard, visualization, much work you're having, right? More the functionality of the application, more the size of the application. Yes or no? If your application have more functionality, more capabilities, the size of the particular application that you download and install will be more. That's the reason whenever you download any such enterprise application or any application, most of the time, any uh, license application, it will give the document support matrix on which it is written. What is the minimum configuration of your hardware system is required? Means how much CPU, how much RAM, how much disk required to install this application. If you are not fulfilling the basic criteria prerequisite, your, your application may not work properly. For example, application size is 2 GB. Particular application that you're running, size is 2 GB. So once you install this application of 2 GB, it will take 2 GB resource from the storage, from the disk, from the hard drive. For example, you have hard drive. From the hard drive, it will take 2 GB. For example, you had 500 GB free disk. Free 500 GB free disk you have here, not utilized yet. So now once you install this application, the free size will become 498 GB. Yes or no? Application is installed. Once you launch this application to run, once you launch this application, you click and launch the application. Application will launch. You know what? Any application you're launching first time, it takes few moments to start because the application is, is, is residing on the disk, right? Hard drive here. To run, it is going to retrieve the data from the hard drive. So retrieval time, sometime can be take one minute, two minutes, also some time. Retro will be so it will take time. Once application is launched, you can do any functionality fast. This functionality, this, 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 this will be fast, right? It is not taking this much of time. How much time it is taking first time to launch the application? Because first time when you launch the application, the application was in disk. Once you launch, it will retrieve the data from the disk. And now, once application start running, it will post on the RAM. Understand? That is the reason RAM we call also RAM full form random access memory. We also call it runtime memory. Runtime memory means whenever any application is running, those applications will be posted right now running on the RAM. For example, this system is having 8 GB memory. RAM. Memory. When I talk about memory, means RAM. When I talk about storage, means disk. It can be disk storage. Okay, so when I take out memory means RAM. So this system has the 8G RAM. So once you launch this application, application size was how much? 
2 GB, right? Application size was 2 GB. So it will take the RAM of 2 GB out of 8 GB. Then your system RAM utilized and current remaining RAM will be 6 GB. Running the application and, and taken 2 GB RAM. Now you install few more application, 2 GB RAM it will take, then your system will be 4 GB. Some more application installed 2 GB more. The remaining memory will be 2 GB and 6 GB running right now. Yes or no? Means more and more application installed based on size of the application, it will utilize the RAM while running it. If you are not running, it will not use the RAM. That's why RAM is called runtime memory. So when it is running, that time they will use RAM. Yes or no? If the size of the some more functionality you enable, more functionality you enable, the size of application will become big and it will start using more memory, means more RAM. Yes or no? That is the reason sometimes you see web application have been deployed. Why do you deploy less memory utilization? But once you run the application for a few, few months, it is using more and more memory because you have enabled more and more functionality. The size of application has become big and it is using more and more memory. So you understand? You have the disk to store because 500 GB disk you had. You install more applications, you can install. But once you run that application, it will take the memory from the free GB, right? Free RAM. If RAM 3, 4 application is already open the same size, right? For example, 6 GB RAM is already one more application you install for the 2 GB, then you will not be able to launch the application. For example, 1 GB, 1.5 GB also you have, you will launch the application around 7.5 GB out of 8 GB have been utilized, your system may start being slow. Yes or no? Because RAM you being utilized, full utilized, 80%, 90%, your system will start becoming slow. You launch the application, all four applications are running. You added some more things, some more capabilities, then more and more utilization of the RAM. In that case, may possible it may reach around 8 GB and system will become hang. Yes or no? Because it will not be able to run system because RAM is fully utilized. Isn't it? That is sometime if your system is running uh, more, many of the application, then uh, generally you people, many of the people restart the system. Because they do not know what is the reason of slow. They simply restart. Because why? Why restart works and system uh, will become faster than previous? Because in your normal system, uh, there are many applications which runs on the background. You do not launch those applications, but once you start a system, many applications will start running on the background. And many applications, you open it, but you do not realize that you did not close those applications, it's still running and eating the RAM. Once you reboot your system, those running applications get closed. Yes or no? Then you launch some application that you want to use. There's a reason system functionality, uh, uh, system speed get that gets improved, and those unnecessary applications got closed. Understand? Understand? So RAM, when you run the system, run the application, that time it hosts on the RAM. So based on how many RAM you how much RAM you have, that's the reason. When you buy the mobile, you said that I need 16, 8 GB RAM. This mobile came with 16 GB RAM means more and more application you can run and nowadays the application which are coming are having higher size so when you bought that uh, samsung galaxy mobile in 2013 in 13 samsung galaxy grand came first touch mobile right it has around 1 gb ram something 500 mb 500 mb 12 gb okay. mb ah 512 mb something so application so you are not having WhatsApp kind of application, WhatsApp having, but not having all the functionality. You have little, little, small, small application. Yes or no? And you are not having so many applications. Nowadays, we had so many applications on the market as well as application size also become, became big because they are having multiple functionality. That's the reason the RAM, you need high RAM mobile so that you can install multiple application and high size application all, can also work. If you have RAM, less RAM, you cannot in, install all the application. Few application only you install. Now 512 MB mobile, you cannot use it. Because nowadays the application is coming. Single application sometimes has the size of 500 MB also. 512 MB, uh, sorry, 512 uh, MB. Huh? 512 MB of size of single application sometimes. Right? That is the reason yeah, with, the time, with the time we have to increase the RAM so that it can handle the big application and number of application. Now, every people have more than 50 application in every mobile. Understand? Clear? Any question? Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, 
in a network of uh, 10 computer. Nine computer is, I mean, a network that got 10 computer. Nine computer is running properly, smoothly. Mm -hmm. But one computer is not running properly, going very slow, whereas there were no application is running on that specific computer. Why that is slow? There are multiple reasons. Slowness means slowness means these resources only. The only reason for slowness is these resources. Maybe some applications are running background. The only reason for slowness is these applications. If you're running physically, see, I'm not sure whether how you're accessing. If you're running accessing through uh, remotely, maybe your connection is slow. That's why this application that system is slow but if you're running the system physically then these are the only resources which define and uh, the performance of your system get in mind so see man as i said that uh, once your system is slow you re reboot generally but you have the option without reporting go in the task manager in the uh, bottom task bar you have right bottom of your system then yeah. you right click and you go in the task manager Everybody go home, one, one second is discussed, open the task manager. Okay. You have a task manager on which you can see which all different applications are running right now, how much memory and how much CPU and how much disk they are eating. Get in mind, if any application is eating high memory, high CPU, it's because it's slow and you are not using that application, right click and kill the application means end task. Right click and click on end task. Means that application will get closed. Some applications run in the background, right? Those applications you can close. You have the option, if any application run on the background, you have the option uh, to disable the automatic start by going on the services so that once you start your system, that application will not start automatically. Remind, because you start a system, but it still use RAM because many of the applications have been installed as a service and those applications get restarted automatically. For example, your WhatsApp, WhatsApp application. So without launching also, you get a notification, right? You get, you directly just click on open. It does not take much time, but once you while open just now, you launch just now click on WhatsApp, it will not open. It, it takes few moment, but you launch your mobile, uh, turn on your mobile, launch the WhatsApp after one minute, it will launch immediately because you have not launched it. It got launched automatically once you restart your system because it was installed as a service means the process got restarted automatically. Right. So if any such application which are running on the background, once you start your mobile and start your uh, system, automatically those applications will launch and they will start occupying your memory. Got in mind? So any such application you install, we can uh, disable the automatic start if we do not need them. Right. So by going on task manager, we can see which all applications are running. Unnecessarily application, we can close. But make sure that you identify which application it is because your system also to perform the basic functionality of the system, there are some operating system related tasks. If you do not know and you kill the task, maybe your system functionality will stop. Some functionality will get a stop. Yes or no? If you kill automate, kill without identifying the exact task or some important application has been closed, right? So make sure that you identify and you close. In Google Chrome, it is in Chrome, Mozilla has a Chrome, some specific application you install, it will return. Icon will be there and name will be there. So you close the specific application only, not system related. Generally system related uh, task will be on the bottom and customized application will be on top most of the time, right? Easy way you can close. So understand the use of uh, memory and disk storage. Once you close application or shut down the application, once you shut down the application, your RAM will be released. Means 0%. All that it will be stored on the disk. The RAM will get released. All the data will be stored. That is the reason you option you open the Excel file. You open the Excel file. Whatever editing you have done, that time it is stored in the RAM. You can see it here. If you do not save, if you once you save, the copy of that will be saved on the hard drive, hard disk. If you do not save it and restart the system, the changes were hosted in the RAM, but RAM will get clear after setting down the system or closing the application, right? Then you will lose the changes. Once you click on save, it will store the copy on the hard drive and you can access it anytime. 
Otherwise, once you reboot, sometimes sometime you forget to save and system got rebooted. It was in RAM, RAM got cleared. That's the reason changes has not been saved and you cannot recover unless you click on save. Understand? That's the use of RAM. So many any of the applications you use, will use RAM and many of functionality you enable, you keep the data, it will host the RAM. Understand? So we'll use, now, what is the use of CPU then? CPU means center processing, center unit. processing unit. Unit, right? CPU. We also call it processor. We call us also call it processor. Processor means the component which performs some task. This task, this task, this task, right? These are tasks, work. Understand? You do this, you click on something, your processor will send the task to the hardware. Yes or no? You're running something, run means work. This running means processing. Yes or no? Some logs you want to retrieve, it will send the process. Alert, you want to fire, generate an alert, it will generate an alert, means processing. More and more processing work, any application which has more and more functionality will use more and more CPU. Because every task that you are doing, it will use CPU. Application being hosted in the RAM, just hosting. But every task that you are performing in the application, it will use CPU. So any big application which have more tasks to do, more tasks to perform, right? Will use more CPU. If you have, if you have more tasks, but you are performing less tasks, it will use less CPU. If you perform more tasks, more CPU. Many people have logged in. Many tasks they are doing. More and more CPU utilization. For example, you have SIM, right? If you generate SIM generating more and more alert, more and more CPU. More and more people are logging and searching. Again, it will send to the database and retrieve the logs. More and more process. Means more and more processor utilization. Understand? So you install the application, but you are not using much. You launch it, but not running much process. Less processor utilization. Running more and more, doing more and more work more and more CPU utilization. So based on the application, so that is the reason we plan it out. We plan, for example, particular application we install, how many functionality you are going to enable. But for example, particular application is 5, 5 GB size. 5 GB in size, but how many resources you are going to create on that application. If you create more resources, more RAM. Yes, or no? how much you are going to use, single person is going to use, multiple person you going to use, how much time they are going to use, means concurrently how many users, how many uh, process they are going to run. Based on that, we have to plan the CPU. Yes or no? Understand? That's the reason whenever you install an application, based on the usage, it gives a minimum requirement. To perform minimum functionality also, how much RAM and how much CPU. Generally, enterprise application, it is written for medium uses, this much. For small uses, little uses, this much minimum RAM, CPU. For medium, this one for enterprise, bigger environment enterprise, this much RAM, this much CPU. Because bigger environment, bigger more user, more tasks, more processes. Yes or no? Understand? But sometimes, uh, for example, we have gone with the minimum usage, but we see more, more usage, more memory utilization, CPU utilization, then we have to add CPU more, more uh, RAM we have to add to make it functional properly. Understand? And based on how much data you have, it will use the disk how much data you are going to store. For example, your SIM. SIM is going to collect more and more logs, more and more logs. It will use disk storage. You want to keep the log for a long time, five years, six years event on your SIM. I will tell you what is SIM on the later part, right? So uh, it will use more and more storage. In your desktop, laptop servers, disk to which you are using, right? Disk also coming of two types. Hard disk you had, right? Hard disk you know, hard disk. Now, you have two type of disk, hard drive in HDD, and another is SDD, yes. SDD, SSD. Hard drive means uh, hard drive. SDD means hard drive. SSD means solid state drive. Solid state drive. Solid. Oh, solid hai. Dumb hai. So already described state drive SSD claims that we are 100 times faster than hard drive. SSD functionality SSD uh, claims that SSD is 100%, 100 times faster than hard drive. In what terms it is faster? For example, you restart your system, right? Some application which is there on the 
hard drive only. You have to launch, right? Once you launch the application, it will get launched on the hard drive. That's the reason in previous systems, two, three years back, when system had hard drive, it was taking time to boot the, to reboot, uh, to start your system, right? You restart uh, your system, it was a running, running, running window. So open. Now you have to wait for two, three minutes to launch any application. You launch Google Chrome, it's not opening, not opening. Isn't it? Then after five minutes, two, three minutes, um, 10, 15 Google Chrome has opened. Because command was sent, but hard disk broken time to retrieve because hard disk was slow. It took some time to retrieve the data from hard disk, right? Because the response of the hard disk was slow. Yes or no? Response time of the hard disk is slow. That's the reason once your operating system is stuck, send the command to the hardware, but you have hard disk, response time is slow. That's the it takes time, but command was sent. Then once hard disk slowly, slowly respond, it will open 10, 15 tabs of Google Chrome. Yes or no? So any application, even system is running, any application you launch, it takes time. And resulting, <clears throat> any new functionality of the application, within the application only, for example, you are starting new functionality, which has to take some data from the, uh, from the hard drive. For example, some profile information has been stored. Now you want to open the profile. It will take some hard drive, it takes time, time to retrieve. I mean, the overall functionality of the application was slow because of the hard disk. Yes or no? Now you have SST. You shut down the system, immediately it will get shut down. You launch, it will get installed, it will get launched, and you can open the application also because response time of the SST is much higher than the hard drive. Now, now almost all the laptop coming with the SST. If you're buying any laptop without SST, right? Hard drive, do not buy it. Go with the SST only. Understand? So that the speed will be faster. Anyways, uh, if your system is performing slow, right? Many people, some people may have the old laptop, which is slow, not running fast, right? You can do something. Because older system, 2014, 16, 15, 4GB RAM was coming. You can do something, increase the RAM to 8GB. 4G system also have two slots, 4GB, 4GB. You can buy more for more GB. And you can, you know, instead of hard drive, you can go with the you can go with the SSD instead. If you don't want to spend much money, just 256 GB. Because hard drive is costlier than uh, sorry, so drive, SSD is costlier than hard drive. 256 GB of uh, in Indian rupees you got in two to three thousand between in between two to three thousand. That may be sufficient for personal use because nowadays we are not storing any movies, songs, or any videos, right? We have faster internet. So 256 GB may be enough. If you are financially good, you can do 500 or more, but 256 also it is enough to install any application and to run for normal use. Understand? System will become, become fast. Do not think that I have old laptop, so it is not working. I have to buy a new laptop. You can still utilize your old, old laptop by increasing the RAM and hard drive. You'll see drastic change on the functionality of your laptop after using the SSD. 4GB RAM laptop also work, work better on the SSD. But the only thing is nowadays applications are coming with higher size. So RAM is required. 4GB RAM means may not be sufficient all the time. But normal work you can do. Understand? Clear? Anybody have any question? We'll take a break of 15, 20, 15 minutes. The hard disk drive is okay, but what is SSD, sir? I mean, the abbreviation. Solid state drive. Solid state okay. drive. Solid state drive. Solid state drive. Okay, 15 minutes break, 10 o'clock right now. We can have 10 10 20. 10 20 will connect. So let's finish the static address. Okay. Oh. Yeah, tomorrow those nine.
Are you are moved? Hello. Audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So welcome back. Yes, yes sir. So uh, let's come back uh, about uh, to access the Facebook.com. That's the reason I took the break in between so that uh, we can move uh, back to the previous topic. So the question was that we have to access the Facebook.com, right? Uh, the Facebook server was hosted. Application was hosted somewhere in the US. Had this particular IP address. Right? And first of all, what you have done is you have taken the internet connection, isn't it? From the ISP. First of all, we understood about the network internet. And then after that, we understand the importance of IP addresses, right? So now your system got the IP address, right? Now you have taken first thing to access the Facebook.com, you have to take the internet connection, right? So you understand ISP, what is internet, what is IP addressing, who provide the IP address and everything, type of IP address, static and dynamic. Static IP definition you have written or not written? Uh, let's continue for you, right? Static IP address is the IP address which will, re which will remain configured in your system and will be used by your system only and will be used configure system and will be used to your system only till the time you have paid for till the time you have paid for Uh, hello, sir. Could you repeat? Uh, what is it written? Uh, IP address, which will remain configured in your system and will be used by your system only till the time you have paid for. Right? Next paragraph, you write. Whether you are using the static IP, whether you using that IP or not using. Whether you are using that IP or not using. Whether you are using that IP address particular time or not using. Cannot be used by anyone else. Cannot be used by anyone else. Cannot be reused by anybody else. <coughs> Cannot be reused by anybody else. Understand, right? That equals static IP. Now your system, you have to access the Facebook.com. You got an internet connection. Now IP address got right. Now what is the next thing? What is the next thing? You got internet connection, internet provider has given you the IP address also. That means you are connected to the internet now. That means you are connected to the internet now. What is the next thing you do? Hmm? Access the website. How? You will type the domain. Where? You have to open the browser, right? Browser. Browser. Open the browser. You open the browser. For example, you have browser Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, or Para Mini, right? You open the browser. Browser open. Right. Done. Done. What will you do? Hmm? Write the name because we don't know the neuromic neuromic address. So we'll write the name of Facebook. Facebook. Facebook.com will enter on the browser. But what is this? Two moment back. Few moments back, I said you that each and every computer on the internet are being identified by the unique address IP address. Means I want to access the Facebook.com, I will be hosted on this IP address. So I should access the Facebook IP address. Yes, what is your typing? Facebook.com. Because this is a, neuro, a numeric number, we can cannot uh, mean uh, I mean the GNS cannot remember the at the same time. Right. The GNS so, every day. The... Numbers difficult to remember. Right, you have billions of IP you cannot remember, but name you can remember. 
facebook.com simexpert.com hotstar.com right that is the reason we use numbers or uh, sorry we use names domain names not the ip address but how your browser once you type facebook.com because final communication happen will be based on the ip address only then only the request will route to the facebook.com this particular system ip address right so but you are typing facebook.com so how your browser will come to know what is the because final communication once you request leave to the browser from the browser to the facebook.com the final communication will happen based on the ip address only not based on the facebook.com domain name means your browser should know once you type the facebook.com the browser should know what is the ip address of facebook.com so how browser will come to know from the log book from the log book of dns server right DNS tell means if you are entering facebook.com then by some means we have to tell your browser bhaiya if you ask anybody type facebook.com then redirect the request to this particular ip address me have we have to tell the browser somebody has to tell the browser that facebook.com ip is this one so whenever user enter facebook.com you route the request and send the request on this particular ip address yes or no means somebody should have the directory which have the domain name and ip address yes or no so who has the directory dns dns server domain name server which have the domain name right so we had a server called a domain name in dns that we call a dns server so dns domain name server right so you know what happens now once you enter the facebook.com or any website in the browser your browser will send the request to the dns server and ask bhaiya what is the ip address of facebook.com the browser should know then only it will write so browser will send the request to dns server to find out the ip address that process called a dns lookup that we call a dns lookup that process when your browser send the request to the dns server to get the ip address we call a dns lookup right and this query we call a dns query that means your browser will send the dns query to dns server right and the finding out the domain uh, ip address that process we call a dns lookup means your system will do the dns lookup yes or no to sir i have a question on sir hasan here i have a question on uh, this one yes uh, ip address sir so yes. static static uh, static ip address can be recorded uh, recorded in dns what about uh, dynamic ip address sir so to do that uh, dns will have that record also dynamic what purpose anybody see your system anybody will not try to reach right to access the application which is in, application which is installed in your system because only user system will have a dynamic ip address all your server application will have the static ip address only yes or no nobody will try to reach to your system to access any application get a point exactly. dynamic, yes. dynamic ad address will not have the record only static systems static application will have the record oh, thank you thank because you. dynamic ip will be users ip address yours and my ip address not the application or server ip address that most of the people will facebook.com means it have some application hosted on facebook.com which will have the static ip address will have the record understand but this process is called a dns lookup so dns server will have the directory means table yes or no understand record that we call as record dns record but dns will have the record where you can find the mapping of Uh, domain name with IP address, IP address the domain why means vice versa. Sir, what is uh, sir what is belongs to the I mean email email address for a specific person. Mm -hmm. So domain that we call SMTP record SMTP SMTP okay MX record MS MSTP MX we go have to create MX record for that case MX record mail mail exchange record okay so there are multiple records. on the dns so just this this mapping of this is dns will have the record of ip uh, domain name with ip address so this record and this type of record in dns we call as a record what we call as a record a record there are multiple type of record for this purpose we have to use a record the multiple records such as spf record mx record soa cname 
get in mind there are multiple type of record so that's a homework for you you write down what is dns and what are the different type of dns records <clears throat> first homework of this batch what is dns server and what are the various type of dns records Better. So this type of record that we are discussing right now is called as A record, where DNS defines the mapping of domain name with IP address, right? So your browser will send the request to the DNS and uh, check, means look up on the record, what is the, then it will send the request and query, and then DNS will perform the DNS lookup to check what is the IP, uh, IP address of space.com. Once it finds the IP address, it will give it to your browser. And then browser will come to, okay, this is the IP address. Then browser will send the request, means communication, establish the communication with the Facebook.com with this particular IP address. Understand? The A record, what is A record? That is what I was saying. A record means mapping of your domain name with IP address. Right? That is called as A record. Mapping of domain name Sir, with IP address. I have a question on this. Yes. So this mapping... Uh, cannot be done automatically, right? That is what I'm so, saying. I'm going to explain you. That yeah. is what I'm saying. So, let the me cover this topic. Let me cover this topic. Okay. Then you are. So, so, okay, so. I'm already going to clear your, your concern. Uh, uh, so, uh, you understand, right? Mapping of domain with IP address is called a record. There are multiple type of records you're having. But in this case of accessing the website, it used a record. Now, where is the domain name server? Domain name, who deploys the domain name? How your browser will come to know which DNS server I have to send the request? Isn't it? So what happens is, dynamically, once you connect uh, uh, to the internet, your D, uh, ISP assigns the IP address automatically. Along with that, along with the IP address, ISP also assign the DNS server IP address also. ISP will have their own DNS server, right? where you have the record, all the record will be having. So along with your internet IP address, right, which you use to access the internet, it will have the DNS IP address also. So that whenever, so DNS server IP, they will have DNS server, right? And it will send a DNS server IP address also will be configured here. So that once you access the website, it will look up at this particular DNS. For example, if DNS server IP address is 196.0.5.100, right? then this particular IP address will be configured under DNS. Get it? Then it will send every request this in the server to get, get resolved to the IP address. They're called DNS resolution. Once it gets resolved, right? Once it get the IP address, that process is called DNS resolution. It resolves. Confused. Hostname with IP address. That is called DNS resolution. So it has the IP address. So that means uh, once you connect to the internet, you get the IP address to your system configured as well as IP to the DNS server. So that your system can use it to configure DNS. Can you please explain it again? What yes, sir. Your, as you understand that uh, mapping of domain name and IP address will be there in the DNS server. So how your system will come to know which DNS server I have to check the IP address? Then while your ISP, uh, DSCP server from ISP configure the IP address to use in your system, at the same time, it will come from the DNS server IP address also on your system. Get mind? So that uh, uh, your system can send the request for DNS local and get the uh, IP address of each and every website that you access. Understand? Clear? Sir. Clear? Yes. Uh, generally, I have seen that uh, DNS server IP and uh, DHCP server IP both are same. So not it's not same all the time. It's not same. If you have installed uh, same application, multiple applications on the same server, both applications, then only it will be same, but not always. Okay, DNS may be different and DHCP can be different. Understand? Okay. So uh, once you uh, configure. DNS means once automatically uh, con configure DNS, then uh, it will get resolved. Understand? So DNS server is must. DNS server is must. 
For example, if you are configuring the static IP address, for example, you bought the static IP address right from the ISP, then they will give the DNS IP address also that you can configure manually. So we have to configure static IP, we have to configure manually only, not automatically. Because it's your IP address only, you have to configure. This is a homework for you how to configure static IP address on Windows. You can watch the videos on YouTube or simple Google search you can do. You'll come to know how to configure it. How to configure static IP address on the Windows system. So it means every ISP has their own DNS server. Right. Every I will tell you. So every, whenever we connect with uh, ISP, so ISP uh, automatically give you uh, uh, right. their DNS server. IP address, right. We can easily connect automatically, right? Automatically, you don't need to configure manually. Automatically, okay. it's a part of DSCP only. You get one IP address as well as a DNS server IP address also will be. Sir, how to check my DNS server IP address? How to? Uh, how to check my DNS server IP address? How to check? Yeah. How to check what is the DNS server IP address? Yeah. Yes. In IP my computer. IP config on. Ah, first of all, you have to understand how to check my IP address. What is IP address configured to your system? You can run the command by going on CMD. Run the com uh, command IP config. There's a command called IP config. That's all. If you configure, if you type the command IP config, you will get the detail of what IP had been configured to your system. Get I mean? If you type the command, as you said, IP config slash all, you get the DNS address also. What DNS, subnet, everything, what is subnet, I will tell you. Uh, full IP data and DNS detail, you'll get it by doing IP config slash all. What DNS has been configured. Understand? Clear? So uh, this is the homework for you. Again, one new homework. You have to run this. You have never run this, right? Many other people who are non-technical who have never run this. So you run this command and check it out. What is your system IP address? See, I you, have to, you have to ensure that uh, uh, when you configure a static IP, right? Any IP, just check it out, how to configure. But roll away back to dynamic only. Otherwise, you will not be able to connect the internet. So that particular IP is not under your ownership, right? So you cannot yes, configure yes. anywhere else IP. So make sure that you click back to the dynamic only. Otherwise, you cannot connect the internet. Get it right? You check static IP, how to configure it. You can save it also. But after that, you roll back. Okay. And click on dynamic only. Otherwise, you will not be able to connect to the internet. Because that particular IP you are configuring is not fall, does not fall under your ownership. You cannot use it. Yes or no? So you will not be able to connect to the internet. Just given homework so that you can see how to configure it. When you configure a static IP address, right? You have to configure uh, this one also, DNS also. DNS also, you have the option whether you want to configure static or dynamic. If I configure dynamic, automatically, once you connect the internet, it will configure. But when you have the static IP address, uh, you can configure uh, DNS also static. You have the option. Even you have the static IP address, but DNS can be configured dynamically also. It depends. Get mind? So DNS can be configured as a part of DSCP, dynamic, or you can also click on static option and configure statically IP address. Understand? Clear? Clear? So, uh, your IP config, IP config, right? Uh, this command you have to do. The next is DNS lookup. DNS uh, look, DNS lookup. Which command do they say? NS lookup. Sorry, NS lookup. NS lookup. NS. For the getting the LBA. Yes. So, lookup. Lookup is spelling it, right? Yes, sir. Yes. NS lookup. NS lookup. A command you can use to resolve, for example, facebook.com. You want to check what is the IP of facebook.com. You can type NS lookup, then you can type a domain name of facebook.com, you'll get the IP address. You can check it out. Any domain, for example, simexpert.com, you run the DNS lookup command and type simexpert.com, you'll get what is the IP of simexpert.com. When you run the domain NS toolbox, right? Uh, NS lookup command, it actually send the query to DNS server to get the IP address. Similarly, you can do the reverse DNS. There's a command for reverse DNS where you can type the IP address and you can check it out the associated domain, particular IP address if it belongs to any of the domain. That also you can check. 
as the DNS lookup, right? So you run NS lookup command to check it out on any website. Trace art command, trace art or trace root, trace art command, trace art. In Windows open system, we have trace art command and Linux, we have trace route. Trace art command, for example, if any website you are not able to access, right? For any of the resource, any server outside the server, you are not able to access. So you can run this command trace route, trace or trace route command. Where you can check it out, where it is blocking. Problem in the newer end, a problem in a customer and some other end, right? So end-to-end -end connectivity, where it is blocking, right? It will give the connectivity detail, where it is blocking or connectivity successful, reaching out to the destination or blocking somewhere. So what, what router in between, I'll tell you what is router. Whether you are IC blocking or your company is blocking or the customer company is blocking. Get in mind, where it is blocking, you'll get the end-to-end -end details. So network troubleshooting okay. perspective, we'll run this command, trace route command or trace search command. So can you show this, I mean, in uh, real life, please, trace search. Trace search command. Okay, once you so move- how, how, to, how to implement the trace search command, CMD? Throw CMD. That is what I'm saying, you do it yourself. Further, these are very basic things. If further need, then once we start the lab, uh, I will show you how to do it, but you can do it yourself. If you are not getting it, then ask me to do, then ask me to do that. Right. You can easily get it. It's not difficult. Right. So don't expect everything. Something you do it yourself help though. Right. If you have any issues, then I will show you that these are very basic things. Okay. Do it yourself first. Trace lookup, NS IP config, NS lookup, trace route and some more commands were there. Um, I will tell you whenever required. Okay, so you do write this thing and, uh, and check it out on your system. So now, uh, you understand, uh, you should have a DNS address also. Now, the question is, you know what happens? One website, for example, Southern Payment System, based out of Saudi Arabia, they have launched their website. To, you know, to host the website, what all things you have to do? First of all, website is hosted in where? Workstation or server? Server. Server, right? If you want to server. host your website, if you want to host your website, you have to host on the server. So first of all, you have to configure one server. Yes or no? And you have to configure IP address. Then only your application will be reachable, right? So. One IP address you will configure, for example, you configure 199.0.2.100. IBED is configured, right? So your website is already developed in development environment. So now you will install this website here in the application, right? You install this website here. That website you installed. Understand? That website you installed. Now, once you install the website, it is hosted in. So once you install the website, the server is connected to the internet. People can access the can can people access the website? For example, sadad.com. Uh, company name in sadad.com. The website should be sadad sadad.com. So once you access sadad.com, the website will be accessible or not? No, I don't. Hmm? it won't be accessible. You can access it using IP address, but it won't because southern.com, you have given your name, right? But how I am accessing for email for India. So I should have an entry, right? The southern.com, this particular IP address has been mapped with southern.com. So how my DNS server will come to know that new website has came, right? And uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's IP address is this one. Each individual IP address will download DNS name. No, no, no. It's ownership name. To Google, Google DNS. It's not the domain name. See, you can map with the domain name. For example, I have bought new IP address. It is not mapped with any domain name. It's in my ownership. But we have not used any domain. We are not using the website for hosting the website. We are not using some other property you are using. So no domain name has been configured. Domain name, we only take ownership of the website. Because people will access the website through domain name, not through IP address. Then I map. 
So if I if I got something new, okay, this particular IP address, I I want this particular website should be accessible by sr.com, right? So IP address is known anybody because IP address is assigned to the system, anybody can access it. But sr.com is not known for the people. Then I have to announce, bhaiya, I have hosted this particular website website and this particular IP address. Now you can access it through sr.com. Yes or no? I have to tell all ISP DNS so that they can make an entry that anybody access sir.com should be route to this one. That means we have to announce. Yes or no? Then they will come to know. So how we can announce that? Google DNS. SEO. So what will happen is you have to create the DNS record. You may have your own DNS server. Or maybe you are taking some service provider like GoDaddy, Hostinger, yes or no? Or companies generally will have their own DNS server also, right? So they will create the record on their own DNS server. You know what happens? All the DNS server, all the DNS server across the globe are connected with each other. You have universal, universal DNS server. We, we have Google DNS server. What are connected to the Google DNS server? Google DNS, right? And IP address is 8888. 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. This is a universal DNS server. All these DNS server, either ISP or your companies, are being synchronized with Google DNS server. Get what I mean? So once you, once you, for example, once you create new, new, new record here, with because if you are deploying new website, you have to create the record. You you create the record on your own DNS server. One, so your, your DNS got a new update, new update, it will forward to the Google DNS server. Now Google DNS server will send the record update to all the DNS server across the globe. All the DNS server. Sir, and is this happen automatically? Like when I uh, configure my own DNS server, right. it, it's automatically connect to the Google DNS server? You have to connect. You have to give the IP address port number. It will connect. You have to connect it. You have to send oh, it. okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Maybe once you one, it's one time activity, once you've done any update you got, it will send to the Google. And once Google receive any update, it will send to the all other DNS. Yes or no? So once you create the record, it will send to the Google and Google will distribute the record to all the DNS across the globe. Within a fraction of second, you can see, within, within a fraction of minute, you can say, I created a website and hosted created DNS record here last minute. Within a minute, I can access that of Sarada.com website from India. My DNS got the entry. Yes or no? We used to do that. I used to do that in my first company. Whenever uh, any development team first to host the website, they were sending the request SOC team to create a DNS record. In the public DNS, we used to create the DNS record. For example, website is uh, uh, deployed in, uh, uh, in India, hosted in India. Then we had some server hosted in the USA. I used to log in on the USA server and we have to check whether our site is accessible from US or not. India is accessible, but it is being synchronized to US and other location. We used to log in on those devices, different location, and we used to check whether it is accessible or not. And the internet also you can resolve. Like MX toolbox is the tool. You can enter the host name and check what is the IP address. If it is resolving IP address means this record is successful. If it is not resolving, it means record is not successful not been distributed yet. But if it is successfully, it take it does not take more than a minute to distribute the record. You know I mean? That is why all the DNS across the world have the same records synchronized with each other. If you can access the Facebook.com here from US, China, Pakistan, from anywhere you can use because all the DNS server will have the record. Then, so this Google DNS server, anybody can use. You can also configure on your system. Go in the DNS static configure configure 8.8.8. .8 .8. It's free for everyone. Get it? Anyone can use it. Instead of ISP DNS, you can also use your DNS, own DNS. Then why companies have their own DNS? Why they are not using free DNS? Uh, Google DNS server. There are two reasons. One is, for example, my company is Mumbai based. Mumbai company, right? In Mumbai, my I have lakhs of users inside my company. If I have configured Google DNS server. Google DNS is outside of the organization. Maybe Google DNS server in Bangalore. 
So once I access the Facebook.com, my request will go to the Bengaluru to resolve and get the IP address. Then it will go to Facebook.com. Means there might be some latency. If my DNS server is within the company only, it won't go outside to get the IP address. Uh, IP address. Yes or no? It will be a little faster. That is one reason. That is one reason. Second reason is uh, these big companies has to deploy their website. They have to create the record many times. Then again, they will have to go with the third party company to create the record. But if they have own DNS server, they can recreate the record themselves anytime. Understand? That is the reason companies will have their own DNS server and ISP will also have their own DNS servers. Understand? So without DNS server, you cannot access the website. Let me tell you a real time scenario which happened with me. Sir, one question. Yes. Uh, Somebody is not in mute, I think. Somebody else. There are many people not in mute. Guys, I have to remove you from the meeting. Make sure that if you're not asking question, you keep your mic on mute. Pragya Sahu. Hmm. Go ahead. Sir, the question is, why only Google DNS? Uh, do any other company don't have their DNS? Every company has their DNS, but this is a universal DNS service so synchronized. It's a monopoly here. It's a okay. monopoly. Maybe later on some, some plan will happen, but there's a monopoly of Google here. Google monopoly is multiple places, right? Not only here. Yes or no? We are many, sometimes many places we are dependent on some companies. Okay. So now you can see it here. Uh, so now we can access the real time scenario is uh, in one, one day what will happen when I used to work in the company, I got my company laptop, personal laptop and my mobile. I had uh, Airtel uh, connection. So we have Wi-Fi router, right? Once I connect my mobile, it was connected to the internet. I was able to access the website. Through my company laptop also, I was able to access. It was swinging connected. Personal laptop, once I connect, it was swinging connected. But when I was accessing a new website, it was not accessible. Page cannot display. Even though me, there is no problem with the internet. Yes or no? My system is fully connected. It's not showing as limited access also. Sometimes when there is no internet, it's so limited access as or exclamation mark, something like that. But it was showing connected and it is written internet access. It means internet was accessible. Still, when I was accessing the site, it was not accessible. What could be the reason? Why I was not able to access any website? Due to some uh, uh, privacy or some uh, restriction. It was my personal laptop, right? Yesterday uh, I was able to access. Today only I was not able to access. It's not a company. It may be, it may be DNS resolution issue. The reason is, uh, it was a uh, my uh, system, right? Near DSCP, my system was configured with the DSCP IP address through DSCP. When DSCP server was configuring the IP address, it configured the IP address, but DNS configuration got failed. Means you are connected to the internet because you got the IP address, but DNS server IP could not be configured. It got failed while configuration. How did I identify it? I did IP config command command prompt. I got IP config. I see IP address there. I was surprised why it is not accessible. Then when I did IP config slash all, I came to know DNS address is blank. Means there is no DNS server configured. Then I realized this is the problem. My system got the IP address, but it did not get the IP of DNS. Then how can I access the internet immediately? How can I sort out this problem for now? Google DNS. Huh? Google DNS. I can go on that LAN setting option, how we configure static IP address. I, IP address was set as a dynamic only. I kept it dynamic only. But instead of DNS, it was selected as dynamic. I click on static. I configured DNS server IP address. Uh, sorry, Google DNS server 8.8.8.8. Click on save and immediately I was able to access the website. If I had to access, I have to configure ISP DNS, then how can I do that? How will I come to know what is the IP address of DNS, ISP DNS?
What other, is my IP address? Other system I was able to access, right? I can open oh, my system so. on which I'm able to access. I can run IP config slash all. I can see the DNS address. And same DNS address, I can configure static in my other system you know, on which I was not able to access. Understand? That is the concept of DNS, domain name server, right? Now, how important it is, right? Company will have their own DNS server, right? Sometimes there are some uh, attack also, DNS poisoning, DNS poisoning attack. DNS poisoning, in case of DNS poisoning, what we'll do is, poisoning understand, jahar ghol dena. Matab, koi cheez achhi hai, the things are good, but they will mix the poison, right? So they will attack, will attack your DNS and it will manipulate the record. People will access facebook.com and it will route the request to some other attacker IP address. You will access the facebook.com, but the request will go to some other IP address. Maybe facebook.com attacker IP address hosted a sim similar page to Facebook. You enter your user and password, it got compromised. Yeah, phishing. Or a DNS spoofing or DNS poisoning. Anyway, so it's very important to secure our DNS server also. Otherwise, attacker can compromise your DNS and poison the DNS. Understand? The mapping which have been defined, they can map and manipulate the mapping. Right now, facebook.com domain, Facebook IP has been configured. So once you say facebook.com, it will go to facebook.com. They can poison, mean manipulate the face, uh, record. Instead of Facebook IP address, attacker can put their, their, their phishing website uh, link. Uh, IP address and to uh, you know uh, to showcase to the user they may create a similar page you will feel like it's facebook.com once you log in and attacker will compromise your credentials or might some other work something you download from phishing, phishing site and malware some downloaded multiple work they can do means the your request can be routed to the phishing site malicious site if there's a DNS person Understand? Clear? Yeah, I have a question. Hmm. Uh, this DNS cup, uh, so if you have so laptop you are finding with the one moment, one moment. Let, let him ask the question first. Huh? Uh, like DSCP provides random IP addresses. So the IP addresses will also contain random DNS names. Why random DNS name? ISP have only one DNS, right? It will be ISP DNS only, not random. No, because IP, IP address. IP, so IP address means to access the internet. It could be your address should be so, should be unique, right? Not the other people's address. This DNS is kind of dominoes. Dominoes, anybody can go and buy, right? So like DNS server IP address, anybody can use. So, your address should be unique. Your name should be unique. So normal IP address is your IP address. That should be unique. Here you are configuring a DNS IP address means to reach out to DNS. The so domain is for you. So is there a particular... DNS name to IP address or so different different IP address different DNS. No, no, same DNS for all. It can be same DNS. It yeah. can be same. DNS. You have one thousand one lakh user. All the user will send a request to same DNS server only. Yeah, Wait a minute. It's a Mac. It's a MacD. MacD is not different for you. Different for me. It's a MacD, right? Yes or no? MacD is for you also. You can buy. He also can buy. He also can buy. Similarly, same DNS server you can also use, he can also use, you can use, right? Is there any limitation for DNS? No such limitation. For what? Tables, records. Yeah. No such limitation, then how we can access any of state? I will limitation, right? There is no such limitation. See, the funda is entry the resources. More and more load, more and more resources. Maybe sometime you might have to find multiple server to load balance, high availability. In case your one is down, you have other. Load balancing, more load, we configure multiple server under load balancing to handle the more load. Yes or no? So, for example, facebook.com does not have any single server. They have multiple server on load balancing. Every country, they have multiple servers. Load balance. You access facebook.com only. But sometimes you request route to this IP, sometimes this IP, sometimes this IP, sometimes this IP. But all are mapped with some domain. Understand? Load balancing feature. One server will not be able to respond, right? Huge, huge amount of uh, 
you know a huge amount of communication a huge amount of you know resources that server will use so load balance high availability load load balance to distribute the load high availability means if one server is down also it will not impact facebook is down once in a year might be see it runs 24 by 7 it has been configured in such a way high availability load balancing all feature has been configured understand yeah, one more question. Uh, sir, uh, every server has own IP address so that uh, DNS server is also own IP address. Yes, DNS server also. If it's server, right? So then only we can configure on the EGNV system. We also have the IP address so that we can configure here and we, people can utilize it on their own system. So get the that means it's a static IP address. Static. Of course, it is static. Of course, we have to be static only. We cannot change, right? Other sometimes different, sometimes different, sometimes different, right? For example, right now, the uh, Facebook IP address is one, right? If, and mapgrid.com. If you change the IP address, if you want to change the IP address, you have to change the IP to the record, DNS record. Otherwise, it will still forward the request on the old IP address. So you have to change, update the record here with a new IP address. Changing the IP address is easy, but changing the domain name is not easy. Yes or no? Completely change. People will not come to know because they access the website using domain, not the IP address. So IP address back, IP address in backend, right? Anytime you can change, but you have to change the record. Just update the record, but domain name you cannot change. Sir, I have a question. Yes. If two different people like me and my friend mm. command facebook.com, mm -hmm. so we'll uh, we'll get the same ip address of facebook or we'll get the different ip address very possibility see facebook facebook is huge it's big very big sir very big company right and huge load right so it is not certain in, in case of facebook in case of simex is certain everybody will get the same ip address because we don't have that much of traffic right so we don't have high ability server or load balancing but in case of facebook they have multiple servers so sometimes you request maybe route to the different server and your friend request might have, you know, uh, gone to the different server. Get it, mean? Understand? So Sir, for, by that, for the load balance. Load balance. Load balance. Mean balancing load, right? Once no, no. Uh, hmm. For the load balancing, uh, uh, so DNS server is also have the uh, uh, many subdomains server. So how can I take, uh, take the which? Server I connected. Yeah, it's there are uh, features. There connected. are features of the load balancer. This if you dip down the feature of the load balancer, this is the configuration available. There are ways we can do that. Okay. We are not going on that down that deep. Okay, nice. We have to work on that. Okay. Right. So this is a functionality available where you can achieve this. Yeah, one more question also. Yeah, I have a question, we, sir. We have created chadar.com on company IP address. Mm -hmm. That's storing in our local DNS server. Right. The same IP address, everything saved in Google DNS also. Huh, same, same because what mapping you define here, same yeah. mapping will be created here, same mapping will be replicated. Then only you'll be able to access, right? Otherwise, you'll not be able to access. So your server IP address will map with the server.com. Then only everybody will come to know every DNS and you can access from anywhere because the entry record has been replicated. If not replicated, then people cannot access the website. Yes or no? Because they will not be able to find the IP address of associated with particular domain. Understand? Okay. So that is now you got the sir, DNS. Uh, one question was there. Yes. Uh, sir, you mentioned, right? Uh, if we have one server, if we deploy one application, for example, on port 443, so it will be HTTPS, then right. we can uh, access that application. Right. Now, for example, uh, I have hosted an application in port 443, and also I have hosted a mail application in the same server. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mail uh, generally uses SMTP port uh, 25. Okay. Yeah. So I my just, question I will is... just respond to this question. Some people may not understand the port number. I will tell you in the later part. Yes, this sir. Is... We are not understanding. This discussion generally, I do not do that. You're asking that, sir. I can explain you how right now. But we are already going to understand what is port number, how it works. Right? So uh, my question is, sir, for example, HTTPS, google.com. So Google page will open. Right. Now, uh, if we want to open the mail, uh, URL is same. HTTPS mail dot Google dot. Mummy, kya bana re? HTTPS mail dot Google dot com. So my question is, even that mail is uh, mail application is hosted on HTTPS port four four three. Is that correct? No, no, no. 
so uh, we need to create mail a record 25 8 number 25 for uh, smtp i mean mail server right you can you can access the inter this is interface but that interface is not hosted on the same server okay interface hosted somewhere else but it send the request to the this server guys let me ekdam banate the dekh masala bese ra okay kon hai bhai khana 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 kya banana hai kya nahi banana hai kon sa hai ubed umed उमेश सिंह राजपूत भैया ये तो खाना खा लो या क्लास ले लो ठीक है और वो कांदा लसुन नहीं है कांदा लसुन डाली थी उसमें ये देखो सुन रहा है <laughs> तो म्यूट भी नहीं हो रहा है मैं इसको वेटिंग रूम में मूव करता हूं वो इन द वेटिंग रूम खाना ही खा लो अच्छे से ओके देखो दैट इज देन व्हाई वी राइट https mail.google.com see what happens is all the email communication will happen on port number 25 only the other people can leave it okay but what happens is to give give the comfort so that you can access from anywhere through web they have created a web application but web application is not hosted on same server it is hosted somewhere else have the different ip address because you have hosted the website already here either you will not do that if you want to access a mail also and uh, web also you have to the same server but you are saying that you have access some other website why you will do that first thing but if you want to do that then web web mail you have to host it somewhere else otherwise two application cannot have the same port number okay you have given different scenario which is not realistic okay sir <clears throat> but can we do this sir in a virtual server is it possible we can do that but again virtual means is completely different server means it's a completely different it's a different ip address either physical or virtual if you are having server means it is completely different so virtual server i'll tell you in the later part okay so i have a question sir yes sir the the, the scenario shared sir to if the internet connected and we could not able to access the internet mm -hmm. so uh, to to fix that uh, you change the dns Ah, uh, not saying. I have configured First, DNS. That time it was not configured DNS. I have to configure. So if it happens in the mobile, how you uh, resolve it, sir? If it happens in the mobile, mobile, how you fix it? It does yeah, not so happen. Mobile, the it? kind of technology that you use, it is not happening on the mobile. If you configure it, but you have the option to configure. I think I did not explore it in mobile. Let's check. Okay. I didn't, sir, I don't it think happened to me on my office, sir. It's showing me connected, but I couldn't access any of the websites, sir. Static uh, configuration we have. We have it. We have it in mobile also. You can see it here. We should check. Okay. Okay. You can see. I'll... I go on the Wi-Fi. Not available, right? IP address. This IP address. One nine two six eight dot one dot one zero three. I got. This is the gateway. DNS. One nine two six eight dot one dot one. Ready, man? So we can change it. Oh, thank you, sir. All right. So <clears throat> now you had to access the Facebook.com, right? Which is hosted here, one ninety nine or zero dot two dot hundred, and here was one ninety six dot zero dot five dot two hundred, right? You had to access the Facebook.com, right? Now taking the connection. Now you got IP address. Now you got DNS. DNS. Now you open the browser and type facebook.com. Yes or no? Now everything is set up. Your request will go to facebook.com server, an application, right? And those server application is hosted. And now you got the Facebook page. You can now access facebook.com, right? You have understand? Now, Sim Expert has been grown up. Sim Expert company grown up. Now we have bought a separate facility building. We have five lakhs of employees in the company. I have to set up a network in my company because we have five lakhs of user. So now we understand how we can design the network. As of now, we have understood how your computer communicate with the internet, right? Now I have to design my own network company network where we have five lakhs of users. That event, new building we have got. So file of using file of the computers, IT company, file of computers. Now we have two objective. In this company, we have two objective. One objective is 
it's an IT company, right? One objective is you have five lakh of users, right? Five lakh computer which are connected to each other. Yes or no? All five lakhs of users means computer should be able to communicate with each other. Internal inside my network, inside my company network, LAN network, LAN, local area network. It's company internal network, right? Where all the users are connected. That network call as local area mm -hmm. LAN network, right? In my LAN network, all the users means all the computers should be able to communicate with each other. I want to send some file locally without using internet. Yes or no? I want to send some file locally. I want to add some chat application to communicate. Maybe some IP phone also, which work on the internet should be able to communicate. Means all the computers should be able to communicate with each other. That is my one objective. Yes or no? And second objective is all the users should be able to access the internet. Means all five lakhs of users should be able to access the internet. This kind of network that I have to design. You have five lakhs of such computers which are connected internally. This is your internal network. I will tell you what is this, what is this. I will tell you the later part, right? But you can see it here. Here, these are five lakhs of computers. So, my two objective these all five lakhs of computers should be able to communicate locally within the LAN network. And all these five lakhs of users should be able to go to the internet, means access the internet. These are my two objectives. Yes or no? Now, you understand in the internet, in the internet, any computer connect, communicate with internet means any network should have the IP address, should have unique identify, unique address, IP address. And when your computer connect to the internet, in internet, IP address are always unique IP address. Being the kind of IP address you, you have, nobody across the world are using the same IP address at the same time. So now I have two objectives. One is my system should be able to communicate with each other. Means again on the network, means it required IP address, unique identifier, unique address to communicate with each other. As well as I have to connect to the internet. Means five lakh of computer, means five lakhs of IP address. Means we have to buy five lakhs of IP address. Similar trend analysis we also have done because not our 500 employees are coming at the same time. The morning shift, afternoon shift, night shift. We came to low, maximum two lakhs of users are doing the work at the same time. But again, buying two lakhs of IP is a difficult task because internet service provider was earning money by giving the internet connection, right? But here, I want to set up my company network and I have to pay crores of rupees. Yes or no? Lakhs of dollars just to get the internet connection to make, ensure users will be able to access the internet. It's a big task. Even uh, DSCP also we use, reutilize the IP address. It's a two lakhs of IP address. A huge investment means setting up the company and other investment is different and just giving the internet right millions of dollars we have to invest what we can do in that case then we then Aina came back to us Aina said that you don't need to worry about that what Aina has done is Aina said that we have assign these three range of IP that anybody can use it for free. We have assigned the three ranges of IP address. You can use any range, any IP address you can use and that we are giving for free. Which are those range of IP address which are free? Anybody can use it. Let's see that. I now said that these range of IPs are free. Anybody can use it. One, ten, dot, zero, dot, zero, dot, zero. 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 172.16.0 slash 12. 
192.168.0.0/16 you can see when i type 110.0.0.1 only one only this we call as a single ip address i put it like this right for example 196.0.0.5 yes or no it is a single ip address but when type a slash some value means it is not single IP, it has range of IP, we call a subnet or network. This is called a subnet. Subnet mask is 8, subnet mask is 12, subnet mask is 16. Means it's a range of IP address, not a single IP address, a range of IP address. We can subdivide and get million of IP address. Millions of parameters and a combination will be created. For example, 10.0.0.1, 10.0.0.2, 0.3, 0.4, as well as 10.0.1.0, 1.2, 1.3, 4. If you create permutation of combination, millions of ips can be created so if you if you want to go that's enough knowledge but if you want to go through you have to learn ip addressing what is subnet subnetting how to resolve it the mathematical calculation that you can do it to resolve this ip address how many ips can be created but that is more on networking concept from security perspective this understanding is enough but if you want to go through more you have time you can learn ip addressing and subnetting Understand? So this is a not a single IP, this is a sub subnet. This subnet. Subnet means range of IP address. You call a subnet. So these subnet or net, oh, sometimes you call a network also. So these subnet means series of IP address. I now say that it is free. You, why, why don't you use it? You can use it for free. But you understand, right? If something which is free, right? It is not that INA is your relative. So INA has given this IP address only to you for free. Aina is a friend of everyone. Aina said that I cannot make the discrepancy that I can give it to you only. Aina says that anyone can use this IP address. But you understand, there might be possible that 10.0.01, he is also using a company and some other person also use it. There are billions of computers, right? Anybody can use, conflict will happen. And we already understand IP address are unique addresses. Then conflict will happen. The Aina mentioned the term and condition. By like giving this IP for free, Aina mentioned the terms and condition. And the terms and condition is this range of IP address you cannot use to access the internet. You can only use internally to your network for internal communication. Means having this IP <laughs> address, your computer can communicate internally to other computer. But these IP address will not be identified over, over the internet. If any computer having this IP address, you cannot go to the internet. Every page cannot be displayed. Because this IP address will not be identified over, over the internet. This IP address will be called internal IP address or private IP addresses. These three range of IP address that we call as internal IP address or private IP. If any computer you see IP config and you get this IP address, this range or this range or this range, we call this a private IP address. Private IP address or internal IP address is the IP address that we can use internal to our network for internal communication. Understand? So anybody can use any company, anybody can use any of these three range of IP to internal to their, their, their network. They cannot go outside because everybody is using same range of IP address. In internet, IP address has unique IP address, conflict will happen. That's the reason. Using this IP address, you cannot access and you cannot go to the internet. Understand? Understand? So IP address are of two types again. For IP, IP address and public IP address. This three range of IP is private IP or internal IP. You remember the range sometime interview asked what is the range of private IP address? Right? So 10.0.0.0 slash 8, 172.16.0.0 slash 12. 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Did you write it Sir, this is very interesting. Sir, you are mute, sir. Unmute yourself.
ही डाउन हो गई इसकी अब दूसरा माइक लगाना पड़ेगा फिर सर नाउ वी कैन हियर जस्ट होल्ड ऑन वन मिनट हां आई आई यूज माय माइक आई डिड नॉट चार्ज इट सिंस लास्ट 3 डेज सो आई थॉट इट हैज 15 आवर्स ऑफ यू नो बैकअप आई डिड नॉट चार्ज जस्ट होल्ड ऑन वन मिनट जस्ट होल्ड ऑन यस सर हेलो हेलो आई वॉडिबल वॉडिबल ओके हाँ दिस माइक विल यूज नाउ ऑडिबल राइट सर यस व्हाट व्हाट इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सर द आईपी एड्रेस प्रोवाइडेड बाय द आईना व्हिच यू कैन नॉट यूज फॉर इंटरनेट but you right. can use it internally yeah. so right. what is the use i mean why i'm going to use this internally i mean what is the so use internally you want internal communication right first motive first objective was for internal communication this computer wants to communicate with this computer this computer wants to communicate with this computer you have an internal chat application you want to transfer some files yes or no internally so our first objective was to enable internal communication isn't it so having this set of ip address if you configure internally we can access you can see when i show you server access i remotely my server ip to 192.168.0.24 which falls under this internal ip address i used it yes or no for internal communication i am the part of office network i can access my servers and network by configuring internal ip address yes or no so our first objective will get fulfill because first objective was to enable the internal communication but i now i already had added a terms and condition that you can use internally you cannot access the internet now again i am on the same point because my objective was not only one my objective was second also to enable the internet access again the internet access we should have public ip address so ip address of two type private and public private ip address that you can use internal to your network you cannot access the internet while public ip address which is allowed to access public network means public network static. means static or dynamic and internet isp isp public network means internet internet isp oh yes whenever internet. we talk about public network means internet so public ip means using which we can access the internet public ip using which we can use public network means internet right so there are two types of ip address private ip address and public ip if you want to write you can write it what is the two type of ip address private ips and public ip address so private ip addresses are the ip addresses which we can... i have a question i have a question but, sir because we are first you write i am i am asking you to write first you write then ask okay private ip address are the ip addresses which we can use internally to any network to any network internally to any network next paragraph you write any com any computer configured with private ip address 
any computer configured with private IP address. cannot access the internet directly, cannot access the internet directly, cannot access the internet directly. Could you please repeat the first paragraph again, please? Uh, anybody can repeat? Which we can use internally to any network. Any computer configured with private IP address can uh, access the internet directly. Cannot access the internet directly, right? First para is private IP address is the address which we can use internally to any network. Right. Understand? Yes, understand. So, Thank you. In the last, you have written any, any computer configured with IP address cannot access the internet directly. There is something means it is possible indirectly. Some, somehow it is possible, right? But directly it is not possible because directly you can, you, this IP address cannot go, right? So now even though, though with the help of AINA, we configure the private IP address, our first object got fulfilled, but we stand in the same place because we want our user also to access the internet. Again, by the public IP address public IP address to access the internet, so many IP address. Then we came to know a new concept. A new concept that you call as, how we can do that? The netting. Right. I asked people to go through the previous session, but people has not gone through. Net, net means network address translation. Translator, you understand translator means Hindi to Chinese, Hindi to English, right? Some people use the translator, right? Google translator means one language to another language, we translate. Network address translator means it's a technology which can translate network address. Address of network address means IP address. IP address we call as network address. So network address translator, it will translate one IP address with another IP address. Yes or no? That we call as NAT. And the process of doing that, doing that we call as NATing. NATing is nothing but the translating of one IP address with another IP address. We call as NATing. NAT. This is a netted IP address. Sometime you will see the net. This is not an actual IP address, it's a netted IP address. This is not actual IP address, it's a netted IP address. You, you, you will hear this word once you go in the security and companies. This is not actual IP address. Or, oh, this was a netted IP address, not the actual IP address. So what will happen is now how we can utilize the netting. Let's understand. This all system has the private IP address. They all wants to connect the internet. In the gateway, this device we call as router. I will tell you what is router, right? right? This is a network device. In this router, the job option was netting. Means we can translate one IP address with another IP address by enabling the netting. So now to allow FileX of user to access the internet, I don't need to buy FileX IP or 2LX of IP. Even by using a single IP address, we can give the access to all five users, five lakhs of users to the internet, single IP address. How? I will enable the netting. That means I will map, I will tell my router, whenever you receive any communication from this specific IP address or range of IP means subnet, I can define single IP address or range of uh, particular IP address, or I can define the whole range means subnet of IP address. For example, my system use 10.0.0, 10 10.0.0.0 slash 8. This range I'm using. So I can tell my router if any communication coming from this range of IP address and going outside Facebook or any website, map this IP address 10.0 of IP address to 199.0.2.100. This IP address we have to buy, public IP address. And we'll define the mapping, all private IP address should be mapped with this public IP address. 
Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, why doesn't ISC use uh, mapping concept? And why? Save, why doesn't ISP mm. use mapping concept and save on the cost of purchasing public IP addresses? Why? See what happens is previous year, few years back, local cable internet, right? They used to use private address. Private public, uh, they used to use, uh, you know, uh, private I IP address, right? But now, uh, since this fiber net come and everything, they are using public IP address only for better connectivity, a better connectivity, a better traceability. Who are using, and every computer will have the public IP address instead. We previously we have local cable internet, which used to give cheaper connection. What they used to do is they used to buy one, for example, lease line, dedicated lease line, and they used to divide and give the access to multiple computer and you used to get the private address, right? Now it has been instructed to ISP that they cannot use private address. They have to give the internet connection to the public IP address only. Understand? So now uh, this, so we can define the netting here that this set of IP address or this net subnet of IP address, whenever any request comes to the router, router will map private IP address with public IP address. And now using public IP address, you can go to the internet. Every computer, next to the internet, request will go to the router, router will map your private IP with public IP address, and now you can access the internet. Understand? So using the Nautic concept, everybody here inside the network will be able to access the internet using the same IP address. For example, now 10 people are accessing facebook.com. 10 people, for example, in facebook.com, you'll have some firewall device. I will tell you what is firewall. If you check, you'll come to know, Facebook firewall will see there are 10 communication happening from same IP address. While people are different behind the public IP, because this IP address is netted IP address. Yes or no? And behind this, there are some 10 people different who are accessing it. But Facebook will see all communication from this IP address only. Understand? Now, you, you must be uh, uh, thinking that when same IP address, once the connect communication comes back, then how it will send to particular computer because all are same communication IP. Then for every session, there's a unique identifiable session ID. Once you access the facebook.com, the session ID will be generating here. So once you access, you will receive back on the same session ID, on the same session. Understand? Understand? So using the same IP address, we can use the internet by applying netting. So netting, here we apply the netting private to public. Means IP address is netting, private IP address is netted with the public IP address. So netting does not mean the private to public only. It can happen public to public, public to private, and private to private also. Because netting is nothing but translating one IP address with another IP. It means one network address with another. Many of you are thinking that this is netting in private to public. But that's not an actual mapping or meaning of netting. Netting can happen with any kind of IP address, private, public, public to public, public, public to private, and private to private also. For that is dynamic, right, sir? That is dynamic. What? That seems like dynamic. Yeah. It's not dynamic. I am saying that it can be configured how you want to configure based on the requirement. Here, our requirement was to configure private to public. So we'll configure private IP, so we map with public IP. But there will be some other requirement where you may configure private to private, public to public, or public to private. Get mean? All we call as netting only. But here, our requirement is to map or to translate private to public. Understand? Sir, how router is translating uh, public to IP, uh, to private uh, and private to public? So how? Means? How router is it translating? It has, it has functionality of translating. Now, how it is translating, we have a deep doubt in networking and we have to learn router first in deep doubt. Yeah, then yeah, we'll okay, understand okay. which protocol, what. Okay functionality it is using, right? That is not required from our perspective. So, our... I'm, not, so I'm not getting it. If you uh, have a same IP, how to, how can you log in uh, uh, the uh, Facebook with the same IP? You can do that. You can see 
every because every connections will have a different session id different sessions that means it is not a same session in my browser only in my system mozilla firefox i have access one facebook.com different session i can use it through mozilla again i have to log in it won't consider a same session if you open another tab from google chrome it will consider same session but if you open mozilla firefox it will consider different session means same system also can generate number of different session yes or no where you can use yourself right these are different system they can also do that understand the individual session id clear yes sir, sir the how was session it id private to private sir huh? and ip will be the same right sir Hello. i will be same only for every computer locally all all, all public ip what you configure the router for netting right facebook will see all connection coming from same ip address public ip address but in different computers based on session id they will oh. not assign a different different computer to computer because ip address is same only but right. it is different session it will understand it's a different set not the same session either it can be from different computer or it can be from different it, it is a different session altogether because ip address is only if the session are same are we bola na session different session id is different how come session will be same i am saying different session id will be different if you open the browser and multiple tab you access facebook.com after login it will be same session because on same browser it will remember session id right you need not to login also but if you open different browser it will consider different session and different session will be created understand yes sir this is very interesting sir great i mean the session my my, my friends you can see the session uh, if you click the right a uh, three dot or a three dot in the right right side of your browser if you go to the settings you will uh, if you click the say, uh, setting if you go to the cache you will see the session id as well correct okay okay got it Thank okay you. great so now we understand are both the motive what fulfilled right now our internal user are able to communicate also with each each other and they are able to access the internet also now let's understand how we have designed the network means how these computers are connected with each other using the cables how this cables are through wifi maybe right but connectivity you either you connect through cable or wifi the connectivity is same only the only thing is you remove the cable yes or no but communication is same only understand you replace the cable with wifi signals but it's same only so let's understand how this computer are connected with each other what is this what is this so this is a network right i mean this was an internal network right network means when multiple computers are connected we call network to create this network we have device we call a network device network devices which enables you to make this to create develop and to uh, solution this network design this network using the network device network you connect these devices using this network devices right those we call net, net, network devices using which we connect multi cable computer with each other right those devices we call as network devices so there are two type of network devices in any of the network right whole internet or local network there are only two devices that we use to connect what are those devices anybody switch and router switch and router switch and router there are two devices you can see uh those devices are first switch switch and another is router switch and router you can see these devices are connected right to so some connection we use router here this is switch here this is switch this is switch you can see switch this is switch switch is being galat kya switch and this is router right now here now when we have to use switch when we have to use router 
what is the purpose of using it purpose is to enable the communication enable the connectivity topology mein how topology is nothing but the how they are connecting right that we call as topology hmm. how they are communicating but ha ah, but this we call as networking devices okay so now there are two type of networking devices router router and switch so when we have to use two or more computer wants to communicate with each other we may have to use router all sometime we may have to use because more than two computer only will use these devices two computer can connect can connect directly using cables no need to have any device when third comes right the two or more devices wants to connect with each other two or more sorry not one if two or more means network right if two or more devices wants to communicate with each other right so either we have to deploy a switch or router so now we'll have to understand in what cases we have to deploy a switch in what cases we have to deploy the router in order to enable the connectivity or communication so when two or more devices for example i have given the ip address uh 10.0.0.2 10.0.0.3 10.0.0.4 we have the range of i private for example private i range of ip this one right uh, one is 10. then uh, You remember this range? You have to remember the range of IP address. Okay. Yes. Now you can see I have configured ten dot zero dot zero dot two three four. So this IP address belongs to which network? Which subnet? Number one. First, right? Means all these three computers are part of same network or same subnet. Either you call it network subnet. You can see why I have one more computer, few more computer. Uh, and they're having IP address 192.168.0.2, So you can see these computers are part of same range of IP same network, and this computer. Which range? Which which network? Third one. Third one. So now this computer wants to communicate. These three computer wants to communicate with each other. So you can see all computers part of same network, right? So when two or more computer, when two or more computer the part of same network or same subnet, either you call it network or subnet, are the part of same network slash subnet, wants to communicate with each other. This computer wants to communicate with this computer wants to communicate with this this this, this. wants to communicate with each other. Then, then to enable the communication, we have to deploy the switch. When two or more devices wants to communicate with each other, now in order to enable the communication, we have to at the part of same network. Two or more devices, which are the part of same network, wants to communicate with each other. Then we have to deploy the switch to enable the communication. Well, see, all three devices are part of same network. Then we'll deploy the switch and connect the cable. Understand? So, in brief, switch switches within the network or within the subnet. Within the this is one network. You have switch. It will switch here, 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 here. Means switch switches within the network or within the subnet. Yes or no? Understand? So, within the network, what does it mean, sir? Because five lakhs people here. Either you call as network or subnet. This is this is network of one single network, right? What we call a single network. When you have a specific set of IP address with specific range, we call it this is one network. Oh, got it, got it. Thank it's you. Not sir. Something, see, it's not something it's a one network, local network only. In local network also subdivided with multiple network. That one based on the subnet. Okay, this is a 10 network, this is one one seventy two network, this is one 192 network. We are different, different network inside the company, right? So if two or more devices, which is the part of same network, means same subnet, wants to communicate with each other, we have deployed the switch 
to enable the communication. That means switch switches within the network or within the subnet. That's right. There are two types of networking devices, switch and router. So what is switch? Sir, can you share any example of communication? Like <clears throat> what kind of communication can be done within the computers? Huh, what? Like, <clears throat> like within the computers, uh, you said it to communicate within the computers. Within the, computer, within the network, within the network. Within the network. Uh, so, so what? So what kind of communication will communication be done? Communication means within... I want to send them file to this computer. Oh. I want to send some file. I want to send them e internal email, internal email to this computer. I want to uh, have some chat application. So I want to chat. That I mean. Okay, okay, sir. Go ahead. Awesome. This is a communication. Yep. I, I want to transfer any file. I want to take the remote access of this computer. Understand? Perfect. Got it. So, uh, you right. What is switch? Switch is the network device. Switch is the network device. Switch is the network device. Comma. If two or more computers, if two or more computers which are the part of same network, which are the part of same network. If two or more computers, which are the part of same network, wants to, Sorry? wants to, wants to communicate with each other. Want to, right? Want, wants. Wants to communicate with each other. If two or more computer, which are the part of same network wants to communicate with each other, then we deploy the switch to enable the communication. Then we deploy the switch to enable the communication. Just give me one moment, okay? Uh, can you repeat, sir, last line, deployed the switch to enable the connections. To enable the communication. So, please repeat more, again. More easily, actually, switch is the network device. If two or more computers, which are the part of same network, wants to connect or communicate each other, they use switch, simple. I mean, we deploy switch. That means, jo mujhe lag raha, wo aina se jo teen IP address mila, wo pehla jo hai number one, agar us range pe jitne bhi uh, computer rahega, wo sab uh, switch use karega, aur two or three ke saath agar connect karega, to router use karna parega. I think so. Let's see what sir is going to say. No, I, uh, if you are using the same IP, like, ठीक है, अगर हम INA के first IP use करते हैं, और three computers, like three devices, वो same IP को use करते हैं, same range के subnet को use करते हैं, तो exactly. तीनों को connect करने के लिए switch हम use switch करें. लगेगा. Exactly. Okay, 100% correct. So, if you have two or more computers, the part of same network, same range of IP, same network, wants to communicate with each other, we deploy the switch. Understand? Yes. Understand? For example, yes. Yes, for example, uh, for example, generally while we no, uh, draw the switch in the paper, so this kind of generally this kind of uh, we do not like this, right? But actually, switch look like this in the physical device. It look like this. Switch and router both look like this only. But it will return it is switch router, right? But we denote switch like this and router we denote like this. Okay, just to denote or identify. Okay. For example, you have switch, right? 
in switch we have multiple ports are bahut bada ho gaya okay gram mein this like this for example one computer you have one computer you have two computer you have three computer you have four computer okay now one computer 192.16 sorry 10 word, 10 word wala example leta hu 10.0.0.2 right or one one computer i have which has the ip address 192.168.0.5 okay so now i i'm connecting through cable now what is not correct is a different subnet 192 see number 4 is not correct if i connected like this now this computer can talk to this computer communication will happen this 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 but no computer will be able to communicate to this computer and right. neither this computer will be able to connect with any computer because this is the part of different network so you cannot connect to the switch switch port this switch port should have same range of ip in same subnet if different network communication will not be allowed in switch because switch can switch switches within the network or within the subnet it cannot provide the communication from one network to another network these are diff different network right switch only provide a connect to the same network not different network right if any computer two or more computer which is a part of different network if they want to communicate with each other then in that case we have deploy the outer outer right ruk jao ruk jao aur likhunga ruk jao ruk jao because switch also you have to write next point in switch Uh, you you written right then next paragraph you write switch switches mute your mic please please mute your mic switch switches within the subnet or within the network in brief right switch switches within the network or within the subnet understand switch switches within the network or within the subnet right so you can see within the network it will switch from here 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 switching right within the network or within the some of these three range of ip address right switch switches within the network or within the subnet while router routes between the network means if two or more devices wants to communicate with each other but the part of different network we have to deploy the router to enable the communication or to allow the communication you can see it here these three devices are part of part of 10 network these three devices are part of 192.168.0.192 network right so we can also deploy switch here switch and we can connect with now these computers wants to communicate with these computers we cannot deploy we can connect like this we cannot connect two switches we cannot connect like this because this is different network this is different network any port of the switch cannot be the part of two different network or more than one network all port of the switch should be part of same network so this i cannot connect this uh, sorry i cannot connect directly like this this is one different network and this is one different network so how can i enable the connectivity i have to deploy the router Sir. router in between okay. here somewhere the different network this is different this is 192 network this is a 10 network so i have to deploy the router router that is the reason you can see the router here because this is a private network different network this is a public network different network to allow the communication different network. we have a router here in the gateway once you take the internet connection from isp you will have the router it will terminate on the router so the external network different network this is different network that's the reason in the gateway we have the router always in the company will have gateway router which terminates you know what happens in the previously when you take the internet connection arm almost 10 years back we have two devices 
internet service provider used to give two device one's router one is router one is switch one is router and one is switch <laughs> router which provide the connectivity from outside and another switch which provide the to router then where you can connect multiple computers yes or no so now single device because single device have the both functionality router also and switch also nowadays i will tell you nowadays some digital routers are digital routers are coming which can perform this switch switching also and routing also so now you get one box only it's not a router only it's a digital switch which have the switching also and router also tell you i'll give brief understanding right now we are understanding separately in the enterprise network you may have separately but in the home network that you see you'll have switch and router both and enterprise network also sometime we use uh, uh, digital switches where it can do the routing also and switching also understand but both are having different technology router is different and switches different understand so let's write what is router so router is a network device a router is a network device comma if two or more computers if two or more computers which are the part of different network slash subnet which are the part of different network slash subnet which is a part of different network slash subnet wants to communicate with each other wants to communicate with each other wants to communicate with each other then we have to deploy the router in order to allow the communication in order to allow or enable the communication right in order to enable the communication in order to enable the communication in next paragraph router routes between the network router routes between the network understand when do we do we have to use router when do we have to use switches yes sir yes yeah. yes sir very clear thank you so much thank you sir yes sir it is very clear okay okay so you know using router and switches we design a network and we took the inter we took the public ip configure netting and everything now after doing this our all users are able to connect to the internet yes or no design the network given the internet access all users are connected to the public network yes or no yes sir you have connectivity you can access your your users are connected with public network you can access the internet now you see internet means public network public network right in the public network you had good people bad people both yes or no yes your sir home, hackers yes sir your home is your house home is on the city and connected to the road of course you will have the road right so that you can go out and you can come in now you have home so you go outside but on the same path by following the same path bad people 
criminals can also come inside to your home right for yes, that sir. for that you have gate on your home you have gate right in which so in your network you have router in your home you have lock directly you can lock it once you go inside you can lock it so outside people cannot inside but same thing in the company in the company people come in and going so we cannot lock it yes or no we cannot lock it similar to your network in network you have the way your people go outside but outside on the public network we have good people bad people hackers attackers can also come inside and can steal the critical information proprietary information yes or no private classified information can steal yes, it and delete it can modify it isn't it can shut down the servers isn't it so by office in office also can happen physical uh, uh, you know thieves can come inside to secure it you use security guard you hire and deploy security guards so that they can check it out right only legitimate people legitimate means valid people can come inside only authorized people can come inside yes or no sometimes in some yes, private some uh, company which are having critical, critical information when you go outside they check your bags also one comes you design they check your bags when you go outside also internal people also they check the bags yes or no security guards means security guards only will allow authorized people and to ensure that anybody going outside not taking any company's asset outside data outside yes or no in the physical isn't it means we have to secure isn't it so that only authorized people can come inside and go outside with uh, in security guard similarly in the company in the digital network also a network is open so we have to ensure that only people who are authorized some website access or we have to give some access to some people only they can access and come inside yes or no not unauthorized you will not hackers attackers so we have to secure our network also how we have secure our uh, physical office there is a device in the networking we call as security we call as firewall what work is done by the security guard in the physical network physical office same work is done by the firewall in the digital network same to same we'll understand the functionality of firewall and understand how we can secure our network yes or no now we'll talk about network security how we can secure what are the various security devices that we need our network to secure it before that we'll also understand how the communication happens in the digital communication how the communication happens in detail in the form of packets how the packet will come and how the it will reach to the destination when you see the facebook.com right you just access and go to the website but what happens in the back, background on the back end that we are going to understand the communication will be break, will be broken down in the form of packets small small packets how they will come to know where it is sent how it will recollect right in detail we'll understand understand this is a homework for you because that is something we use tcp udp protocol for communication so in the homework for you is there is a video of mine in the youtube you write it the homework what is tcp tcp and udp and udp transport protocol transport protocols what is udp tcp and udp transport protocol but mean there are transfer protocol we call it tcp and udp right so what is tcp and udp and in the video itself i have explained what is the difference between tcp udp right what is the three way handshake method in tcp udp the whole thing which is important i have explained them when we use udp when you use tcp as of now you don't have knowledge many of the people but i explain you what is tcp what is using what is the use of that very much what is digital communication so which video sir uh, that is what i'm saying in my youtube channel you know my youtube channel our youtube channel right same expert sir can you please send the link in the group yes sir i will share yes, the sir. link in yes sir group. i will share the link 
the video is uh, same expert channel everybody know right yes sir youtube channel yes, sir. yes. right on that you will find tcp and udp tcp and udp i will share the link as well right make sure that uh, you learn then comment in the video so i'll see whoever who all has learn it right commenting and liking means it will reach out to maximum people that is one way your youtube youtube algorithm work in this manner if people watch people is spending some time on that and uh, if they are commenting liking then it will reach to the maximum public right so also i will review if you have learned what you have learned you can comment on that right it is a request kind of thing that you like and comment on the video and i will see which all people have gone through the video it's a preparation for the interview some more videos i will ask you to go through once we reach on that section okay sir previously previously i used to explain but unnecessarily is eating the time because we already have video right you can learn there so we can cover some extra topics some different topics on the actual class that's the reason why to if something is available already why to uh, cover it again here yes sir correct right mind so that is the reason i am sharing this some of the video are in 6 to 7 videos which are important here that you have to watch and complete because this is the these are the very frequently asked question why tcp udp malware is a different dos ddos that i'll telling you later part once the time will come not now because not everything you'll understand initially right once we reach on that step then slowly slowly i'll asking you to go through okay sir is sir yeah, sir do you have any video regarding uh, cisco packet tracer just you have said we will divide the small packet is this the same right. video sir no 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 that video is not there because practically we are not performing this that is part of network team tracing the uh, cisco packet tracer and all that does not falls under the cyber cyber security responsibility okay that falls under the network and and sir are we blue team or hmm. ah I we mean, are the part of blue team blue team is defensive security yes sir thank you defensive security means how to defend the attack right we call it blue team blue team and red team red team uh, there is a video of mine in youtube what is sock and penetration testing so penetration testing people are the part of red team sock people are the part of blue team if i want if you want to check in detail there is a video called uh, that i created sock and penetration testing and sir what are the purple team sir purple is the is the mix of both if any team performing defensive and offensive both we call as purple okay but generally you will find separate team blue and red either you are a part of defensive security you will not be part of offensive security right but a small company may have both single team for both you can call them pur purple team okay sir thank you sir so make sure that watch the video and comment also on the video like and comment subscribe also <laughs> sure sir i i did i did sir okay so that i can reach it to the maximum uh, people Uh, sir, uh, can we get today's session recording? See, today's till basic means uh, basic session are coming in. I'll upload this session on YouTube. Make sure that once we start our actual topic sim after finishing this, those video will not be shared. You have to make it the note note, and you have to ask the question if you, in case of any confusion. You will get the notes also for the for that, right? Make sure you. I explain you the reason, right? What is not being shared. Once we start the practical session, then re recording will be shared that you can watch it for another two month. but any such system will not be shared i am here to support you but you understand you have to support ourselves also you understand right anybody can watch this video can understand everything i am telling you hello simply learn kind of training that people will not watch fully if i start sharing the recording everybody people will watch for free will not join my training so that's a limitation for us hello yes uh sir uh, actually uh, saturday class uh, i'm not uh, will join actually my office is on that so only i already uh, said i already said you can inform me personally no Yesterday no uh, uh, next next week uh, next week ah, sunday you can inform me in this case not on public forum you can inform me personally in case okay okay okay, okay sir I'm able to join anyway saturday class also i'll upload in youtube only initial networking and security classes i'll upload in youtube only okay. but after that in okay. case if you're not able to join you have to inform me personally prior to the class so i'll share one time was temporary link okay okay sir thank you okay uh, no sir uh, like uh, transport protocol 
and ip planning these all topics are uh, topics of videos available on youtube or you have protocol to... trans transfer protocol yes that is what i'm giving the homework we just now bola na ek minute pehle the homework uh, is available on youtube like woh ek one hai like three way hands ke hands ah, same video yes. same video transfer protocol okay. tcp and udb you call as transfer protocol a single video three way handshake transfer protocol tcp udb what is the difference between them when we use tcp when we use udp what is the purpose of using those right yes. same video to be covered like uh, like more topics which i can see in the uh, files are like uh, sock analytics training syllabus i can see more topics so wanted to know do you cover in the class or we can watch either either the... video or in the class i think Okay, either any one of them will be done. Hmm. Sir, okay, hello, sir. Uh, yes. As we in your uh, uh, server, it's uh, uh, it's running on two thousand twelve. Uh, at a uh, as per the check, uh, the two thousand twelve right, right. server is already end of date. Right, Recently, last two months, three months back, it was in end of life. So I have to upgrade it. Yeah, sir. In because... my company also, uh, we have Correct. upgraded to. 2012 to uh, 19 so i correct correct you are 100% correct i have to upgrade it but what happens if people are continuously using lab if i upgrade it yeah. it is time for me to shut down then upgrade activities it uh, i have sir, to so, also time sir ye kya 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 wait asar to ye means vulnerable uh, ho gaya na sir ye uh, vulnerable hai vulnerable attack. hai dekho of course vulnerable hai but it's a lab server we are not keeping yeah. a proprietary data or and in for information server what they will do sometime it happens in in own server also some server i give the access somebody installed some malware it got yeah, yeah. then somewhere two server got encrypted because i give the access to you people and yeah, i have yeah. an internal access also some people have downloaded malware it was run somewhere both the server got encrypted that to any uh, hmm. antivirus is installed or not in, in the your server i will tell you antivirus is there but There will be some chances, right? Where antivirus will not be able to detect it. Antivirus okay. will not be able to detect it sometimes. Same thing happened. Okay, uh, so, but yes, 2012 server has been end of. Yes, Is Microsoft stop releasing the updates? Yeah, yeah. So have to After plan. After 10th of October. Right. Sir, hello, sir. Right, right. Go ahead. Sir, I have a request. Hmm. Sir, uh, I am new in this field. I am totally new. So. कभी कभी क्या होता है कि समटाइम्स पीपल आस्क अ डिफरेंट क्वेश्चन आउट ऑफ ट्रैक और या फिर वो इतना डीप क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं कि जो मुझे जो आप पढ़ा रहे ना उस ट्रैक से बिल्कुल भी बिल्कुल डाइवर्ट कर देता है सो so, वो कैच करने में टाइम लगता है बिकॉज आई एम न्यू हियर सो आई हैव अ रिक्वेस्ट कैन यू प्लीज टेक दो क्वेश्चन विच आर रेलिवेंट टू दैट टॉपिक विच वी आर स्टडिंग दैट टाइम ओनली right so that's, we that's correct only we cannot distract because i am new and i know few of uh, few of people of your student are also new they got easily that's distracted correct. if someone asked the unrelevant i am not saying unrelevant uh, someone asked the questions uh, uh, deep deep question like uh, like if you are knowing I understand. something understand we understood we understood see the what? message will be message son will be see two things if anybody ask any is any question you can ask privately sir or uh, what i'm saying is you either you so if anybody ask one thing you can do is i will tell this is question something deep dive so if you don't understand that's fine because if what are the important thing i will discuss myself only i know yeah, what you can ask to, in the uh, and uh, no matter no matter let me complete no. let me complete first let me complete what i'm saying is what is important i will cover myself only in case somebody asks you is my responsibility i do not you know uh, i do not uh, avoid any question is my responsibility sometimes people ask out of the context it happens some time people ask the question out of the context some different questions right but being a trainer i do not generally deny the question answering the question but in case this happens you people understand that i was not explaining this during the training if somebody asks if you do not understand that's fine one thing this fund you understand okay there is different concept it was not needed that's why then i have not explained you something asked is it a trainer or responsibility of trainer right i cannot deny this question if anybody asks something they have query i cannot deny it but i understand that at the same time we have different people 
who have different level of understanding they are new they may feel like demotivated sometimes that they are not understanding but you understand i have not covered myself if it if it, if it was important i would have covered myself only that is one thing and second thing i would recommend people if you have some such question i'll give some 5 10 minutes 5 minute time at the end of the session that time you can raise the quiz press quiz press right, question sir. Right. right. So during right. the session, uh, uh, try to uh, be yeah. and okay. ask the question within the session what is being covered. Any extra question? If you have oh this scenario, this scenario, because sometimes you will give different scenario where people are not aware of that. But still, I am not denying this question. Okay. At the end of the session, like we are connecting right now, after finishing the actual topic, that time you can raise your scenario questions also. Understand? The win-win situation for. Sir, may I say something, sir? Thank I you, sir. Sir, may I say something? Because, sir, हमारा यह the screen है Zoom का उसके नीचे reaction button है वहाँ पर click करके हम लोग hand raise कर सकते हैं number one so that I mean nobody will be distracted you will understand कि हाँ कोई किसी का कोई question है तो वो बंदा अगर uh, privately, the chat box hai, pa uska question de dega. To class ke end ke baad, last ten minutes individual question ka answer up de sakte. Isse jo uh, jo naya hai, uska koi taklif nahi hoga. I'm not very good in Hindi because I'm learning Hindi. I'm okay. trying to explain. But you got my uh, point correctly. So thank you so much. I'm also but saying think, the same. And, I'm also uh, saying the same. Yes, that's going to help. Uh, uh, that's, uh, yeah, help us all. Because when a question comes, it is in the brain and it goes on. So when a question comes, we can direct the message option to the message option. After the end of the class, after 10 minutes, the question will give the answer. So everyone will solve the problem. No one will be disturbed. Right. So do one thing. See, what happens is not every question, not not every question you have to wait till end of the session. You have to keep in mind, if you do not answer certain query within the session, people who have doubt, they will have doubt across all the session. They will have no, doubt, sir. right? I cannot no, keep it till the, till the end. And no, this is not good. So any question you have within the session, you can ask once I take the pause. I'll take your question. But out yeah. of the next session, some scenario, some people have started asking some scenario. If this happens, what will happen? If this happens, what will happen? This kind of scenario question, I'm not denying it. But you ask at the end of the session. Within the session, yeah. I do not check my screen. I do not. If you raise the screen, raise or hand also, I will not come to know because I'll be in front of you only, isn't it? So at the end, if you have multiple people asking question, then we can raise your raise hand feature. If multiple people have, so we can take one by one questions. Get mind? So any question out of the context, if you have certain question, we can take it out of, uh, you know, after the session. Okay, sir. Hello. Why, guys, if you watch that nine videos, uh, na, in, in case you will get that. Uh, actually, hello. Yes, yes. Guys, if you watch that nine videos, na, you'll get to know that nothing is out of contest. We were asking uh, from that nine videos only. So go, go through that nine videos, videos first. And you'll feel that nothing is out of contest. No problem. See, different people. We have diverse background people, right? Different people, different thinking, right? So we'll follow this particular way. Within syllabus, within context, if you have any question, you ask within the session. If you have different scenario, you ask end of the session. Okay? Win in situation Hello. for everyone. For so nine video, you can see that 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 you I recommend everybody to speak on English. Because oh, yes. USA, you can yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Oh, what you are saying is perfect. Don't speak in Hindi or some other language. Your communication Hello. is in um, Hi. In a case whereby we need to um watch the video again to get more understanding of the session. How do we do that? Since um we do not have uh, we won't get the um video recording. Right. So theoretical session, see this is not the first time that's been eight years since I'm following this process. Right. So people are getting the job, joining, getting the job, they're understanding. That's the reason this process is still going on. So you'll have the notes. You have to write the notes like this. The initial session, that's the reason I'm not asking much to write. But once we start our actual SOC, you have to write everything. That means you get the notes and you write. No, what, 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 what I mean is, um, are we going to get a video at the end of this session uh, in the group? That I already said, right? But once we start, video will not be shared. It's strict. 
so we don't get the video a uh, video will not be shared initial video i'm sharing but actual class video will not be shared you are the only one you are not the only one i am training 650 people in the four batches okay i'm just asking yeah yeah okay so, i told you my limitation right i'm here to support you if you have any question anything document everything you have but if i share the video you also watch your friend will also watch your husband wife all will watch for free they will not join our training isn't it that's a limitation that's the only reason uh, okay thank you for joining we'll see you on saturday complete my work as well as videos nine video which are available on the youtube right make sure that nine days you revise it i like the question means this week you have right at least two three days you watch if you cannot come over at all so that we can take it little faster yeah today we were slow because you guys did not watch it i asked certain question you were not able to answer that means you did not watch right if you would watch it once i explain it will reason for you and you will be more more uh, you know you will have a better understanding Se secondary reason and we will take little faster also because we have so many things it's a big big journey of 3 3 and a half month right and we can if you have some ex extra time we can cover some more important topics you already have it on youtube right okay see you on saturday thank you thank you sir thank you sir. thank you